downtown Detroit, the Motor City is ready to go racing again on this 30th celebration of the Detroit Grand Prix. And weather today is considerably better than yesterday when a thunderstorm rolled through, delaying the start of the weekend's first of two races and changing it to a shortened timed contest. One that was won by Team Penske's Joseph Newgarden, who took control of the championship and also had a dip in the fountain. A Detroit Grand Prix victory tradition. Belle Isle Park in the middle of Detroit River is such a scenic place for Indy cars to shine. And that's exactly what Newgarden did yesterday. A quick car and good strategy delivered the Nashville native his second win of the year, and he starts on the pole position today. Yesterday's victory gave him the edge in the point standings over Indy 500 and teammate Simon Paginot, who came home sixth in a gutsy drive in the rain. And then there's the driver who followed Paginot home last Sunday and Newgarden home yesterday, and that's Alexander Rossi. He is tired of being second, and look, will look to rectify that trend today. Just have a look at what a beautiful place we are going to hold a motor race. That is Detroit's Belle Isle Park, right in the middle of the river. And we're right in the middle of that big crowd on pit lane. Ready to go for round eight of the 2019 NTT IndyCar Series. This is the duel in Detroit, but we're only halfway there. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie along with Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy. It has been quite the weekend here in Detroit, following on from the Indy 500 last weekend. And speaking of that, Townsend, what a change. It's time to kind of switch gears big time from the wide expanse of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, 230 miles an hour, to these tight, tricky streets. It certainly is the biggest jump on the schedule because Indianapolis is a huge mental challenge. A lot of these drivers and team members exhausted from a very difficult month of May. This place is all about a physical challenge. It might look lush and luxurious from the sky, but it's anything but. It's concrete canyons down here. It is incredibly physical, and it will punish the drivers for 70 laps. The sun is getting higher in the sky. This track is getting real hot right now. It's going to be tough for these guys for so, the next 70 laps. So, Paul, within less than a week as a driver, how do you make that switch from two totally different circuits? Well, this is what it takes to be an IndyCar champion. Last week, two and a half miles super speedway, the Indy 500, biggest race of the year. This week, the Motor City street course, concrete canyons. Next week, High Bank, Texas Motor Speedway. If you're going to win this thing, you got to be good at everything. A very diverse skill set, and you've also had to keep your energy stores well replenished throughout this week following on from the month of May. As we said, we're only halfway through this duel in Detroit. Yesterday, weather shortened, weather delayed. It made for an exciting race. Umbrellas up, but cars are out. Green, green, green. Let's go racing in Detroit, and Rossi leads Dixon. Biggest mover, Will Power. He's carving up the field. Ed Jones, Ed Jones in the barrier. Joseph Newgarden, perfectly timed pit stop. He was in the lane right as the yellow came out and cycles to the front. Will Power in his stall, putting on those primary tires. Your right front's not done. That lug nut not tight, and there goes the right front tire. Believe this. I mean, come on, guys. How we do anything right? That is so unpensky like Dixon is in the wall from a top three position. You just don't see that from the five-time and reigning series champion. Who's ready to make a move? Joseph Newgarden sees the field to green. Sato all the way up into third. He just makes a nice pass. Joseph Newgarden and Alexander Rossi head to head for the win. Got to just keep the pressure on and hope that Newgarden makes a mistake. Joseph Newgarden is on his way to the checkered flag. Newgarden wins in Detroit. We really wanted this one. I feel pumped for Team Penske today. This has been such a productive weekend points-wise for Joseph Newgarden because the unique uh, two qualifying formats that occur here give both the front row starters a bonus point. So Joseph got one yesterday for starting on the front row in second. He gets another one for winning the pole position today, plus his victory points yesterday. So all of a sudden, he now boasts a 26-point championship lead over teammate Simon Pagano. And unfortunately for the five-time and reigning champ, Scott Dixon, he has slid backwards into fifth place but let's keep the spotlight at the man on the top let's talk more about joseph newgarden with kevin lee well joseph newgarden not only finished first yesterday he starts first today is it to your advantage or disadvantage that this is going to be a totally different race today i think it helps us out you know uh, it's a more straightforward race but i think we got a little curveball with the way the tires are working 
The Reds are tougher to make last this weekend, which is great for the show. So uh, I think we got a great car. Team Chevy's done a great job, like I've said all weekend, uh, having Hitachi and, and Team Penske here and be able to drive for this group. It's a real privilege. Um, but I think we've got the car that, that can win today. So we've got to we keep it on the island, get through the start, and then see, what, see where we're at in the end. Literally keep it on the island. Joseph Newgarden has led the most laps this season, hoping to lead 70 today. And Alexander Rossi finds himself on the front row again with Joseph Newgarden, but the position's reversed. In race number one yesterday, you thought you had a faster car, but with wet conditions, you couldn't get by. How does that change today in these clear skies? Yeah, I think we still have a, a great race car. Um, the 27 Nav and Dirty Honda has been, been mega. The crew's done such a good job all weekend. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's obviously going to be dry. It's going to be a completely different race. We still don't really know what the Fire Sun Reds are going to do. So that's a, a bit of a question mark for everyone. So um, hopefully we can get a good start, and it'd be great to jump them um, and then control the race from there. But we'll just have to wait and see what happens. It'll be great to see. It's been a great hard-fought battle this year. Alexander Rossi, Joseph Newgarden, fun to watch, guys. Jan, he's up there in the points, but he is tired of finishing in the runner-up position. However, his day could have been worse. Just ask Scott Dixon, who crashed out yesterday, a rare crash. And also, Will Power, who endured another frustrating day, but smiles today with little son Bo. He's kind of hit the reset button, and we'll talk to Will Power when we come back. Detroit's Belle Isle Park is bathed in sunshine and just looking beautiful for the second race on this doubleheader, the only doubleheader weekend throughout the NTT IndyCar Series. Two qualifying sessions for the two races, and this morning, qualifying gave us a lot to be excited about, but a lot to talk about. Marcus Erickson of Arrow Schmidt Peterson Racing was in good shape. So too was Scott Dixon. Yeah, Scott Dixon was working really hard through the carousel section here, had a really nice amount of front grip to the front end, but then all of a sudden a barrier in turn seven that leads onto the back straightaway just basically sprung a leak. A lot of water hung up in the plastic overnight. They had to suck it all out, and then we were delayed for about 40 minutes. Joseph Newgarden right here laid down a monster lap in Q2 after they cleaned that water up and secured the pole position. But Will Power, lots of little mistakes throughout this year, and he is Townsend getting mega frustrated. Yeah. We should say that barrier, nobody hit that. No car hit that barrier. As Townsend said, it just sprung a leak, causing that delay. But the NTT P1 award went to Joseph Newgarden. So he starts in the best possible position today alongside the man he arm wrestled with to the checkered flag yesterday. Look at row two, couple of great surprises there. Not a lot of experience, but a lot of youthful enthusiasm in row two further further back you got a couple rookies in yeah. row four that'll be charging hard rookie row here rosenquist and award had a good qualify qualifying but look at erickson even with that little mistake in row six working our way a little further back the indy 500 champ simon pagino starts from row seven ryan hunter ray in an andretti autosport car will be pushing hard but i look to marco andretti and graham rahal those two drivers know how to go big on the first lap they're going to make it exciting. One of Marco's teammates at Andretti Autosport is Zach Beach. Let's hear from him now with Jan Vikas. And Lee, this represents the best career IndyCar start for Zach Beach, but he's playing hurt after a vicious crash at the later stages of the Indianapolis 500. You have a severe bruise on your left leg, so how tough is that going to be today on this tough course? Yeah, unfortunately, it's a bone bruise on my fibula, so um, it's there's not much you can do about it. It's just really sore when we walk. Luckily, when you're in the car, you have adrenaline going, so you don't feel it all that much. But uh, yeah, Sunday night will probably be rough, but uh, it hasn't slowed me down any this weekend, luckily. It's just a little bit of pain here or there. All right, so you're right in the mix here. Joseph Newgarden ahead of you. You have Alexander Rossi, your teammate there. How do you want to position yourself to get in the mix at the start? Yeah, we just need to have a clean start, you know, get going. That, that first stint, I think, is going to be crazy for a lot of people. You're going to see people coming in early and then people trying to stretch it as well. So really whatever the leaders do is kind of where we're going to fall in with. And yeah, Colton starting next to me. Him and I had a great battle uh, yesterday through one and two. So there's a lot of guys up there I respect quite a bit and uh, just want to get the race going once we all settle into our own pace so it'll kind of take care of itself all right it'll be a tough one today physically remember he's just over 130 pounds he's gonna need all that today Lee on a rough course Jan I really enjoyed his determined drive back yesterday he spun on the pace laps in the wet conditions went all the way to the back last position 22nd and worked his way into the top 10 so I think Zach Beach is gonna have a good day today not as fortunate 
as Zach Veach yesterday was willpower. And this theme and this story, unfortunately, seems all too familiar for the champion and the Indy 500 winner. This guy's done it all. He led 45 laps in Austin, Texas earlier this year until a driveline issue put him out of the race. That's his one and only DNF. It was not a spin and win at Barber Motorsports Park in Alabama, but it was a spin and continue. And that's just one of a myriad of problems. Long Beach, California, in a good position, overshoots turn one. These are the things that have led to Will Power getting more and more frustrated each and every race weekend. Then at the Indy 500, where he was one of the favorites, he ran over some pit equipment and nudged a pit personnel, the refueler. He got a penalty for that, had to go to the back. And then in qualifying, he tagged the wall. And boy, you want to see this? That's how he felt about it yesterday. But guess what? It got even worse. Look at the front right tire changer. The wheel nut did not go on. It was not secure. And this is Will's synopsis of the situation. Um, oh, man, frustrating year. Frust frustrating year. Yeah, a frustrating year indeed. And, Will, you've had these seasons in the past where there have been ups and downs. But have you ever had a season where there's been so many little things go wrong with the team? And what's going on? Is there more pressure on the team that's causing all these things to happen? I don't know. I, I just wonder if it compiles and you start to make little mistakes trying to make up for stuff. Um, uh, yeah, it just usually it turns after about four races of bad races. But in this case, it, it, it hasn't. Um, don't know. I haven't had a run of this much misfortune for quite some seasons. If I recall, maybe 2013 was the last time I had this sort of run. So for you, you told me a couple of weeks ago, I'm keeping it in perspective maybe more than I ever have. We see you here with, a, with your family. How much does Bo, your son, kind of change things and just being around family change things for you and give you a new perspective? Well, honestly, there's nothing better than seeing your child. Uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, it totally takes your mind off racing because that has been my life for forever and now I have a son that's certainly the most important thing in my life but um, uh, I still put so much into the racing so much and that's why you get so emotional when it doesn't go right you just put so much effort into it and you want to win and you've got a great team and great people around you so the expectations high so it's very disappointing when it doesn't come together and you can tell he wants it bad today. They'll have a little bit of an alternate strategy. They're starting on the primary tires. That's going to be fun to watch, Lee. And Marty, Will's teammate Simon Pagano knows what it's like to have a rough run. But that was last year. This year, it's been all checkered flags and champagne for the Frenchman. The Indy 500 star. We'll hear from him next. Simon Pagano having the day of his career and has had full command of this 103rd running of the Indianapolis 500. You're going to have to lift a little bit. I, I can't, I, I can't. Just try it one lap for me, please. If you're going to win this 500, you've got to save the fuel, but he wants to lead. Pagano needs to make that car 40 feet wide if he's going to keep Rossi behind him. Rossi can make it to the end. We cannot at this pace, but that's OK. We're going to get some yellow. Alexander Rossi to the lead. Oh, we got a crash. This is going to help us so we can go get him. Ready to go racing. This is a 13-lap shootout. Here comes Pagano to the outside. Rossi makes it stick. Two laps to go. Simon Pagano takes the lead into the home stretch. Simon Pagano wins. He's made an Indy 500. Guys, we just win the Indy 500. Here we are, Victor. Hey, man, we did it. <laughs> It is fun to watch Simon Pagano watching those highlights. I don't think you can watch those highlights enough, can you? So what's been the most difficult part of transitioning from all the celebration, the media, everything that happens with the Indy 500 back to racing six days later? Well, I think there's uh, obviously the physical aspect is um, is one because obviously it's probably the most challenging physically racetrack we go to in Detroit here. It's uh, 14 corners, it's bumpy. You don't really have time to, uh, to breathe between corners and you really have to wrestle that car around. So um, it's very physical. The heart rate's up in the 180s. And uh, compared to Indianapolis, where it's flowing speed, very slow motion, it's it's vastly different. It's the opposite. So um, there's a lot of that. There's obviously the mental side of things. It's also a very different approach. But I tell you what, I'm the happiest guy on earth. Obviously, <laughs> uh, I'm not happy with uh, the performance. It's not where I want to be. But um, you, know, you have to be um, understanding of how it went last week and 
the preparation le leading up to it here wasn't perfect for me uh, personally, but uh, it's okay. We can race well. We always race well. We have a fantastic race car. We just missed a little bit of speed in Quaddy, but uh, we'll be right there in the race. You told me we've just missed it a little bit this weekend, putting everything together. I know you've been celebrating a lot. Maybe you can celebrate with back-to-back -back wins. Yes, that's that's the goal. I think yesterday was our good chance because of the rain, and as you know, I love it. So uh, I thought we would have a shot yesterday. We certainly had a really fast car at the end for maybe challenging for third, but it was really, really risky. And kind of thought championship when I saw Dixon was out. You know, you got to think about those things. But um, but today it's been a very interesting race with tire management. So uh, you'll see the red tires are going to fall off pretty big. It's going to be a lot of people uh, changing strategy pretty quick. A lot of things to keep up with today. Simon Pagino has that ring on, the Indy 500 championship ring, hopefully celebrating in victory lane again. We're getting closer to starting the engines here in Detroit on a beautiful day. You're watching NBC's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by the all-new Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Detroit looks beautiful today in Belle Isle down to the bottom right of your screen they're ready to see the racing in the NTT IndyCar series here on NBC it's race two of this double header weekend and the weather couldn't be any better it's time for the pre-race ceremonies let's go trackside ladies and gentlemen at this time we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as the US Army Garrison Detroit Arsenal presents our nation's colors Please remain standing as Father Theodore Munz, president of University of Detroit's Jesuit High School, offers this afternoon's invocation. Let us pray. All powerful and ever living God, all creation is yours and everything is of your making. We humbly thank you for the gifts of creation that you have given us that we may give praise and honor to your name. Today, we thank you for the 30th Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix sponsored by Lear. We find joy in your presence at this race and find true delight in being part of it. Thank you for the power, the beauty, and the craftsmanship of the cars and for all who labored to build them. Thank you for the wit, ingenuity, reflex, and daring of the drivers. We thank you for the efficiency and passion of the crews. We thank you for Chairman Danker and his team and all the sponsors who have transformed this beautiful island. We now implore you, bless this race and keep all drivers, crews, volunteers, and spectators safe. As you have, as you have united us as brothers and sisters in your name, so give us the grace to love and cherish our neighbors as you have loved us. May this race be to your glory and honor, for you are Lord forever and ever. Race fans, here to perform the Canadian National Anthem, please welcome recording artist and Detroit's own, Angela Davis. And here to perform the United States National Anthem, please welcome Stone Temple Pilots lead vocalist, Jeff Goot. 
So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight on the ramparts we washed were so gallant. It is almost time to go racing in the Motor City. And Scott Dixon, the five-time series champion, the reigning champion, has enjoyed success here a couple of occasions. Yesterday was not one of those occasions. Do you know, Scott Dixon has crashed 25 times in his career. That might sound like a lot in IndyCar racing. It's not. Today is his 312th start. This guy very rarely crashes which puts an emphasis on yesterday, but he's hit the reset button. He's ready to go again. And earlier, Robin Miller spoke to him about a very special honor. All right, Scott Dixon's the ice man. He loves to go through restaurants in Indianapolis. Nobody knows who he is. He is, he loves the fact that he's one of the most famous race drivers in the world, and he doesn't get bothered at all. But guess what? The secret's out. This morning in New Zealand, the queen named Dixie, the companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit, for his services and sport. Now, brother, I don't know if we got to call you Sir Dixon now, but that's a pretty cool honor. It's close, I think. When that happens, I'll, I'll make sure I remind you of that. But no, it's uh, it's it's huge. You know, it's a very uh, large honor. Um, one that, uh, you know, I think is a little different. It's a little different to racing accolades and things like that. It's more of, you know, being you know the person that you are. And I think I have a lot to thank my wife for who I've turned into and being the, the person I am today. But uh, definitely extremely honored. And, and uh, you know, it's definitely a very, very special award that um, I'm definitely going to cherish a lot. Well, cool for your parents, too, because they really helped your career. And everybody in New Zealand is kind of still following you. Yeah, they'll definitely be proud. But I think, you know, it's it's uh, it's your family. It's it's the people that kind of helped you. You know, it's it's a different award outside of what, you know, we've had, you know, say with an Indy 500 or, or a championship and things like that. Uh, and all of them will be very proud. But uh, for me, it's it's definitely a, 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 disting, a distinguished kind of feeling and very different feeling from any of the other awards as far as in motor racing. So uh, I feel very, very, very lucky. All right. This guy hasn't crashed until yesterday since 2014. I don't think he's going to hit anything today except maybe the jackpot. And Robert, if he hits that jackpot, well, what you have to do when you go to Victory Lane here on Detroit's Bell Isle, you have to go into the James Scott Memorial Fountain for a celebratory dip. That's where we find Kevin Lee. That's right, Kev, right? And Diff, this is where everyone wants to finish their day. So Victory Lane, the interview, the pictures will take place at the bottom. And I'm on top of the podium where our man Townsend Bell was, at least on the third step yesterday, after the sports car race. And it's become a part of tradition. So the fountain in the last few years has become a backdrop. And by the way, this fountain is over 100 years old at Michigan's most visited park. And it really started last year. It's not exactly kissing the bricks, but Ryan Hunter Ray last year decided, I'm going to take a little dip into the fountain. Remember, he was snapping a 41 race winless streak. And there's a shot of James Scott, who uh, donated the money for this fountain. And the Lion and their 109 
different outlets that spew water out here at this facility. And Ryan decided, all right, I'll gently find my way down into the water, which is only a foot or two deep here today. And it's a little bit quite chilly. So a good pose for Ryan Hunter Ray. And Joseph Newgarden said, peer pressure is very difficult. So he went in and actually said, I really wanted to climb that line up there as well. But I was told we'd get in big time trouble doing that. So who's going to take the dip or at least succumb to the peer pressure today? Victory Lane by the Fountain, Detroit Bell Isle, and race number two for IndyCar with the command coming up next. You've just had the month of May where you've been completely focused on the Indy 500 and it's quite easy to lose a little bit of race fitness on a street circuit. Second race in two days on a course that every single driver will tell you is very physically demanding. You're constantly in a fit of rage. Your elbows, your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your neck, everything's just taking that beating. Ryan hunter does it in Detroit. Fastest lap by a second, awesome ride. Nothing feels more natural than racing in the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, and Belle Isle Park, right in the middle of the Detroit River for round eight in the 2019 NTT IndyCar Series. This is the Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix, celebrating the 30th anniversary of this event that started with Formula One and has hosted Indy cars and sports cars, and it is a fixture in Detroit. Beautiful day too, by the way, just crept over 70 degrees, light wind, and track temperature just under 100 degrees. Very, very different conditions to yesterday, that's for sure, where a severe thunderstorm rolled through here and delayed the opening race of the weekend and made for very wet, tricky conditions for the 22 competitors in this race. It's the duel in Detroit, the doubleheader, the one and only doubleheader in the IndyCar series on an annual basis. And there is the youngest to ever win a race in IndyCar history. That is teenager Colton Herter looking to turn around a, an unfortunate run in form. And so too, that theme runs true for Will Power, a guy who knows what it's like to win here on the streets of Belle Isle. He's ready to go. A wheel fell off his car yesterday. He's been tagging the, the walls here in qualifying, and he is frustrated. He needs to have that breakthrough moment. He's only had one podium this year. It's been tough. Marcus Ericsson, the Swedish rookie, looking very strong in qualifying until he had a mistake as well. but. He has a decent starting position. We'll start off 12th today, focused, having fun, loving the challenge that this track presents. All right, last week at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, two and a half miles and four turns. Here, less than that and 14 turns. Yes, and this track really is a challenge in many ways. Different cambers to adjust to, corner to corner, big bumps. You have concrete and asphalt surfaces. It winds effectively, mostly right-handers as it goes clockwise around the island. Good mix of slow corners, medium speed, and some high speed stuff right there at turn two to start the lap. That's a sequence, a one, two, fast chicane. And as you exit turn two, it kind of goes up over a rise and drops off that bridge. And Paul, this is the best passing opportunity on the track. Absolutely, good drafting opportunity, good opportunity to use push to pass. But if you make a small mistake on that bridge turn, it really hurts you top speed. And this track is full of places where you can make little mistakes. This was Takuma Sato yesterday. Heartbreaking into turn three, makes a move on Rosenquist, and then on the backside at the end of this straightaway, you can see action here, but this is a little bit different than turn three. This narrows up significantly, and it really goes down to single groove when you get to turn eight. And in qualifying, Power locked up and had to take the overshoot. Barely makes it through this sequence of tire barriers, but you cannot do that in the race or you won't be scored on the left. Yeah, that you can get through to turn 11, but it's gonna put a dent in your race. Terrific, we've had fabulous overhead views all weekend long, but with this weather that we have today, this is gonna be magnificent. For this 70 lap race around Belle Isle Park, 
It's not very long, but they've packed a lot into it as Townsend and Paul just described, ready to go. And this is going to be a physical, a very physical test for all 22 drivers. Are you ready to get things going? So are we. Here's the command. General Motors Executive Vice President and President of the Americas, Barry Engel. Check out the kids on row two between Colton Herta and Zach Veach. They have exactly 34 career starts. That's about 280 less than Scott Dixon, who starts right behind them. But with that youth and enthusiasm and exuberance, sometimes comes bravery. And how hard you can push yourself at a physical place like Detroit could equal a win for one of these young guys, Kevin Lee. Marty Willpower is consistently one of the fastest, if not the fastest man in IndyCar, but no better than fifth this year for the former champion and Indy 500 winner. Had mistakes both days this weekend in qualifying. He will start left, uh, 11 today in the race, but he's the only one on primaries. The black side walls, so look for a different strategy. He's gonna try to zoom past everybody when they pin early. Jan Bikas. And Kevin Tatuma Sato finished third here yesterday. That's his third podium in just five races. But he tried something in qualifying that did not work. So Sato will start in 16th position. So look for his crew today to try to get Sato back into the mix. They'll try some aggressive pit strategy to get him to try to get yet another podium, Robin Miller. Jan, two years ago, Graham Rahal owned Belle Isle. He won both races. Nobody's ever done that before. Well, he comes to Belle Island again thinking things are going to be better. He got seventh yesterday in the first race. This morning, gearbox problems. One lap under the gun, he has to start last, 22nd. But he's also going to start on black tires because he thinks he's got a chance to make some moves. He's always good on restarts. He's really good on starts. So Lee Diffie, let's keep our eye on number 15. Uh, he'll be ready to go, the man who swept 2017. Now, here is the Honda two-seater, and it's being driven by Connor Daly, who finished 10th in last Sunday's Indianapolis 500. He is giving YouTube's Engineering Explain, Jason Fenske, a fabulous ride. How is it? How is it? Oh, it's insane. <laughs> it's hard to put into words. Connor doesn't have a whole lot of chit-chat, which is great, and a taxi driver, so I appreciate that. He seems to be getting us there very quickly. I'm having an awesome time. <laughs> Enjoy the ride, and you can see the forces there with the uh, the helmet moving. It is quite the ride, and thanks to Connor Daly, and again congratulations in that U.S. Air Force car last weekend. We'll go racing in Detroit next. on track, sun shining in the Motor City, and ready to go racing IndyCar style. It is almost time to bring the action. Grid is at the top of your screen, and let's walk you through some of the great camera angles. The Gallagher on board with Max Chilton in the Carlin Chevrolet, the Gainbridge Honda of Zach Veach, the youngster starting on the second row. Really good spot for him. Marco Andretti a little further back in the Auto Nation camera. Will give us plenty to look for, as he did yesterday. And Felix Rosenquist from Chip Ganassi Racing, with thanks to NTT Data, will give us this view. And Felix could very well be in the mix today. Lucas Oil and James Hinchcliffe brings us this view from the Arrow Schmidt Peterson Honda. Pretty cool. Santino Ferrucci looking for a better day today than yesterday. The man who turned 21 on Friday, the Clydell Manufacturing Camera, and Graham Rahal has the visor cam like Hinch. And this is the United Rentals view. And one of the two winners from last year, RHR, Captain America, Ryan Hunter Ray, and Auto Nation combine to bring us this viewpoint. Paul Tracy, you've won here on the streets of Detroit. What are we looking for today? Who's going to do it? Well, I think Rossi, like we said in the pre-race, really has some anger that he deserves a win. He feels like he deserves a win in the last month. And I really feel he's going to try to make and force the issue quickly with Newgarden Townsend. Well, these are the guys that are starting on the primary tires. Three drivers, Ferrucci and Ray Hall, along with Will Power. They'll look to run long on the first stint. 
I'm looking for some of these guys on reds to try to get rid of the softer tires very early. Maybe even lap two we'll see somebody come in. But these drivers have to make it through the first few corners. It's going to get real dicey. Championship leader and yesterday's winner, Joseph Newgarden in the Hitachi Chevrolet, the black and white machine. The yellow and blue Napa Honda of Alexander Rossi right alongside, ready to go, powers out of line early. Let's go racing in Detroit on Belle Isle. Superstar Newgarden, but Rossi on the inside. That was close. Colton Herta and Zach Feach trying to sort their way out, and there's James Hinchcliffe working the outside at turn two with a great run. Here oh, comes Dixon. Dixon had a nice exit over to the bridge. He was sideways, but he's got a run on Hinch, but Hinch just has him on the outside. The orange and blue Honda, there it is there. That's Dixon, oh, there was contact in the middle. Rosenquist, around goes Pato Award. Oh, no. And a big contact, head on with one of the ABC cars, one of the AJ Foyt Chevrolets. I think it's Tony Canaan, and Chilton gets through. Canaan's teammate, Lace, We're done. the car. And Simon Pagano, the Indy 500 champ is in that. Oh, this is bad news for Pagano's run. He's had so much good fortune in the last month, and it all comes to a screeching halt on the streets of Detroit. Well, we'll have to see if Pagano can get restarted. It looks like Kanan will be done. I'm guessing Award has too much damage, but for Simon Pagano, there's a flat left rear. Looks that like much we know. Booted in the rear and somebody flattened the tire, but I don't think he's got any damage on the front suspension. Let's see how this all starts. You got Bourdais shooting up the inside, but further back, I think that's Simon Pagano, Pagano making a lunge yeah. on Marcus Erickson, and then He's Rosenquist and Power and all of Whoa. these guys get together. Yeah, Pagano ran into the back of his teammate Power, and then Kanan came in there and drop kicked Pagano and flattened the rim. So it all kind of really started from Simon kind of stuffing it down the inside and trying to make a big inside move here. This I is from Chilton. I think Pagina would have been all right, but then things sort of checked up and guys got together, and that's what happens when a camera hits the gearbox. Slick move there by Hunter Ray. He sl slices and dices through there. But so when Power checked up, that sort of caused Erickson and, and, and they got into a ward, and then Pagino tried to slow down, but Kanan was coming through and got into the back of Pagino. So just the accordion effect, it's tough to really single out anybody in that situation. How about Rosenquist? He was up on, he was bicycling it. He was up on two wheels. Here's the view. This is Felix Rosenquist. Look to the right. There's Will Power. Up. Oh. Yeah, Will Power got into the side of him, rode over his wheel. Will Power stalled. He's in anti-stall mode, gets it going. Wow, how much can change in a week? Simon Pagano won the biggest race there is in the world, the Indy 500 this week. He is caught up in a lap one, turn three incident. Look at that list of cars involved. The AMR safety team doing a top job cleaning and clearing it all up. And we'll go racing when we come back. You're watching NBC's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by the all-new Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. PNC Bank, make today the day. NTT, official sponsor and technology partner of the NTT IndyCar Series. And by Firestone, drive the tire that drives IndyCar legends. under a full course caution here in Detroit for an opening lap collision with multiple cars involved. Race Control has looked at it, analyzed it. There will be no penalties given to any of the drivers involved. But Jan Bikas, there has been a flurry of pit stops. Yes, there has. Some of the cars you just saw file through the picture. There were six that decided not to stop. This is one who did. Zach Veach, we also saw his teammate Alexander Rossi. Many of the front runners as I said, everyone except for six drivers that stayed out on course decided to get rid of the alternate Firestone red tires. That was the unknown. No one knew how long they would last. So as long as there's a caution, come on to pit road and get rid of them. Now, this is a race on the black sidewall primaries, Kevin. And Joseph Newgarden was in that camp. He wanted off of those alternates, the reds, as soon as he could be. Now he's seventh in the race right now, but he was the fastest on pit road. It was a lightning fast stop for Team Penske. So they're on the primaries. They topped off now, and they're in the window to do it in two more stops. 
Going to be fascinating to watch Newgarden trying to work on those six cars in front of him, three of them on reds, and Scott Dixon will be up front with clean air. I think it's going to be hard for Spencer Piggott, perhaps, in dirty air, as you see the 22 team for Simon Pagino rushing the Team Penske tool carts back to the garage area to try to see if they can get him repaired and back out on track. Well, it's just Salvage. been such a massive swing, Paul, hasn't it, from being on top of the championship last weekend after winning the Indy 500 to now just being forced down the order. Well, yeah, he's dropped now to 44 po points behind as there's Tony Kanan's car on the hook waiting for that to get back to the pits. So different strategies and a multi-car collision to get things going in the second race in the duel in Detroit. Today's aerial coverage brought to you by the Mullen Kiantu K50 electric automobile. And aren't they beautiful images high above? It is not a beautiful story or situation for will power. This is incredible. We documented this for you at the top of the broadcast. Just his string of bad luck. And it continues. Let's get down to Marty Snyder. No, nope. Lee, he said the car just died, and you can see him motioning in the car there. He just wants a jump to be able to get back to pit road, but for Will Power, he said the car just completely died on him. Meanwhile, his teammate Simon Pagano has come back in the garage area, leaving his helmet on. Simon, what happened here? Uh, I'm going for the gap there, but it stopped, and then I got hit in the back like three times. So I think we got slight damage. Uh, I couldn't select the gears right there. I get uh, really hit bad. Uh, damage the gear sensor so I couldn't select the gears to leave again but the car doesn't have much damage so we're going to fix it and we'll get back in the race there you go so that's why he's leaving his helmet on here in the uh, garage area because they think they can get this fixed quickly it's a gear sensor issue for the Indy 500 winner in fact he's watching that replay one more time and that's why he's leaving the helmet on Lee because he thinks once they get that repaired which should take just a few minutes he'll be able to hop back in and get it back in the race considering power got hit in the back the same way. I'm wondering if he's stuck in maybe like fifth gear or something because he took off very slow and now it's running again. So very odd. Almost got lapped. That's a lucky deal right there. All right, so we told you about the, the multiple pit stops. However, this man here, race leader Scott Dixon, did not stop. Spencer Piggott did not stop. Same story for Santino Ferrucci right there on screen. Graham Rahal and Max Chilton. So the top five cars in the order did not stop. And then you can also add Will Power to that list as well. Will would have been in that chain at the top if it weren't for that issue that stopped him on the back straight. Pace car starts to accelerate. Looks like we'll go green next time by for Scott Dixon. Question is, how long can you hang on to the Reds that basically the whole field wanted to get rid of at the first opportunity? Can he make them last? And Will Power has to catch the tail of the pack, and he doesn't have a lot of time to do it, so he's going to have to hustle. But they really frown upon you hustling around the track under caution. Well, there's really nothing out there right now except in turn three if there's any final cleanup, but I think it's all sorted out. Power's going to have his tires at pressure, at temperature, cleaned up, and he's going to be coming furiously from the back of the grid. How about for the United Rentals Honda of Graham Rahal? He started 22nd and last. He's on those black harder compound primary tires. What do you think about his chances sitting well, there in fourth well, place? Well, he elected to stay out. He's our Honda's. Honda on the move driver right now, top of the charts there, up 18 positions. So he's in a good spot, but he will have to run the Reds at some point. Yeah. But he'll try to probably do the shortest stint possible on the Reds to make it to the end. Marty? And guys, I like this call by Mike Hull and Scott Dixon to stay out there. Hull told me before the race, I feel like if we can get to lap 16 or so on these red tires, we can make it to the end on one more stop. So everybody else who, had, who pitted earlier, they have to do two. Dixon might be in a spot here with the lead where he only has to do it in one stop. Spoke to his team owner, longtime team owner, Chip Ganassi, right before the start of the race. And Chip said to me, 
after all these years, Dixon's still teaching me things. His focus is incredible. After crashing out an unforced error yesterday, he said, this guy is ready to go. He is so in the zone today to go out there and green, get green, green. victory. Let's go racing in Detroit. Dixon at the front and gets a beautiful restart over Spencer Piggott. Will Power is still, did not catch the back of the field. He's about 10, 12 seconds behind this group as we're back to green. Nice start by Dixon, nice gap. Dixon's got the softer tires. They should be good on the start, but the question is again, for how long as Newgarden to the outside of Max Chilton. What a slick move. A nice move, but now Rossi has to respond. He's got to follow Newgarden and stay in touch. Further in the pack to Kumasato. Zach Beach, his teammate Ryan hunter -Ray. up front. First is Scott Dixon, Spencer Pickett, Santino Ferrucci, Graham Rahal, then Joseph Newgarden running in fifth, the first car that has stopped in this race. Looked like Marco Andretti was going to have a peek on his teammate, and he made the pass. That is a bold move on Ryan hunter -Ray. hunter -Ray in the yellow car. He'll be right on board with Andretti. I think Hunter Ray might try to come back on him now. Nope. Marco, what a, what a bold pass. Oh, big sideways on the power. Tire still coming up to temp. He is on blacks now, but here we are with Dixon and Pickett running in second. Watch this. We ride on board with Ryan Hunter Ray setting up for the back straightaway, but whoop, there's Marco Andretti. Luckily, with that pink Auto Nation end fence. So Newgarden can see him, or sorry, Hunter Ray can see him coming through. Yellow, uh, sorry, white and green car is Colton Herter being chased down by Sebastian Bourdais. Here's the Andretti duo just ahead of the young Brazilian Mateus Lace, who was one of the many cars involved in that opening lap accident. But now he is back up to speed. Oh. Dixon's Ray starting Hall. to spread. Ray Hall. Higgins, and Graham thinks about it on Santino Ferrucci, thinks again. Rossi you don't thinks need about to lift that up you. Rossi thinking about it on Max Chilton. And radio coming through, you don't need to lift on upshifts. I wonder who that, was that Roger Penske coming on? That was Roger Penske Townsend. And the problem for World Power PT was exactly right. They don't have a gear selection indicator. So literally every time he has to downshift the car, he's got to come completely out of the gas. That's going to cost him time on every lap. Currently he's in 19, 32 seconds behind the leaders. They'll catch him pretty quick. It's just been a punishing year for Will Power. And look at this, Marco Andretti wow. on the move. He gets his other teammate, Zach Veach. The Auto Nation Honda and Marco Andretti looking racy. Marco reminding his teammates that it's Andretti Autosport. Marco's team. Back on board with Ryan hunter Ray. Working on the tail of Zach Veach. Veach had a Slow pit stop, had an issue, lost a bunch of positions on that full course caution. To Time understeer. Complaining of understeer. That's what'll happen when you're running in traffic, getting dirty air off the car in front. That front wing just not nearly as efficient. And up front, I'm watching Scott Dixon's lap times. He's having Ford, no problem pulling away right now. Two, so you can make a run into three. Got a nice little buffer of a second and a half over Piggott, Ferrucci in third. Ray Hall is attacking the back of Ferrucci. Newgard now has caught the back of Ray Hall, but here's a nice pass around the outside the long oh, way. Tough, wow. tough maneuver to pull off there. Especially with the distance between Veach and the wall being so tight. Marco threaded the needle. Zach Veach finds himself back here further than where he'd like to be. It was, a, uh, it was a slower than normal pit stop. He had trouble releasing and getting out of the box. That's why he's found himself buried back in the pack. So we're looking at 14th, 15th, 16th at the moment. Dixon's 1.4 seconds out in front of Spencer Pickett. Jan? And the other issue with Zach Veach, who talked about a slower pit stop, he could, he could not get close enough to the pit wall, means he also did not get a full load of fuel. So a double whammy for this Gamebridge team. He says they're okay for now as far as pit strategy, but did not get all the fuel. And obviously you can see he's lost a lot of track position. Got to be careful of those apex curbs and the final two right-handers. You grab a little too much of that, it'll send you to the wall hard. Oh, big wiggle. Big loose on entry there. Here comes Hunter Ray, great exit at turn two. Decides to sit in line behind his teammate. And right now, Scott Dixon showing no signs of the red tires falling off, and that might recalibrate a lot of the strategies on pit lane. 
if Dixon can maintain that sort of pace. 21-year-old Santino Ferrucci, the first car you see in shot here. Dale Coyne, the Clydell manufacturing car. Here is his visor cam. And Ferrucci in his first ever weekend on the streets of Belle Isle, Detroit. He's looking in both of those mirrors because Graham Rahal is all over him. Firestone telemetry gives us the numbers. Let's take a ride with Santino. Smallest guy in the field, just had his birthday, and the biggest guy in the field, Townsend, attacking him on the streets of Detroit. Santino Ferrucci stands five foot four, 118 pounds. You got Graham Ray Hall right behind him at 6'2", 205. Not a fair fight if it's a fist fight, huh? I want to correct myself. This isn't Santino's first weekend here. You remember last year when he had that huge crash? He had that collision with Charlie Kimball. So this is the second time he's been here. The Penske team, the 22 team, hard at work trying to get Simon Pagano, the Indy 500 winner, the man who swept the month of May, back out on track and trying to get some points from this second race. Wow, things have changed dramatically over the last lap with Scott Dixon, race leader, and Spencer Pickett on those softer compound red tyres. They've just fallen off a cliff in racing terms. The tyres have gone away, and those on the harder compound tyre primary, like Santino Ferrucci and Graham Rahal, are now first and second. Check this out. Scott Dixon has lost four seconds of pace over one lap in two laps it's just it's all fallen off a cliff as Ferrucci moves up the inside quite easily further back you see cars that's Rossi and Newgarden splitting Spencer Piggott who's also on reds Spencer Piggott cost Rossi a lot of time but this was a perfectly executed pass by the 21 year old and for Scott Dixon that's going to force him to a three-stop strategy and all these guys that pitted under yellow on lap two are sitting pretty and there it goes oh. all wrong for Piggott Spencer Piggott into the wall. Scott Yellow. Dixon on pit road. Did he make it in time, though? He did make it in time, PT. He fell from first to sixth to Townsend's point, and they are on pit road clean for Scott Dixon. They take those red tires off. You see the damage on the racetrack. Dixon leaving pit road with the primary tires. He said, like you guys said, when they went away, they went away quick, and there's the damage on the racetrack. So this caution could wind up benefiting Scott Dixon. I'll bet what might have happened was that Piggott was trying to get to pit road, and Bourdais got into the back of him. Piggott got into the attenuator as you see the damage the wing that Bourdais is dragging with his right front stuck under his front wheel and it'll be impossible for him to make a turn he should try and weave back and forth to get that thing to come out from under the tire but we get a replay Let's see how right this all here. went wrong. let's see what happens yeah he's making the move on the front straight at the pit entry Piggott was probably coming in Whoa. got on the brakes and Bourdais nails him and it just goes flying in the air like a plane Thank goodness for the attenuator that's now mandatory on, or sorry, the uh, the retention cable on the front wing, or that would have taken out somebody. That whole nose cone would have gone back into the field. Let's look, take a look at Bourdais launching it, super cross style. Yeah, I don't put any blame on Piggott. He made the commitment to come in the pits, and you got to get on the brakes at some point. Bourdais had a run and was going for it and kind of committed to the inside. And then that was it. That's Bourdais better. just didn't ha have any idea. I mean, I, can, I, I can't put blame on anybody there. Maybe Piggott could have done a better job staying driver's right, knowing the field was going to be bearing down on him. That was but better. it's a tough situation. It was about 130, 140 mile an hour wheelie for Sebastian Bourdais, Kevin. And Lee, just to amplify what Townsend talking about, the tires falling off a cliff. Spencer Piggott was trying to get another 10 laps and all of a sudden, they just fell. I had some people telling me that the drivers were reporting it felt like there was something broken in the car. That's how much it changes. All of a sudden, you're fine, and the next lap, it is gone, and that's what's happening. Well, they designed these Firestones this weekend to be super quick for qualifying, but then they would fall off to give the guys, the teams, a lot of different strategies for the race, and we're seeing today a lot of strategies as Bourdais hits the pit lane. Spencer Piggott there with his arms out saying, what, what just happened to Sebastian Bourdais, the four-time champion? But I think they're going to be able to keep Bourdais on the lead lap. I wonder how much damage there actually is to the car. 
so the Dale Coin with Vassar Sullivan crew will go to work on the Sealmaster Honda. This was a scary incident. Both drivers okay. Marcus Erickson is in. The window is open. Now there's some fuel saved from here to be able to do it on one more stop, but Erickson has made his. problem there. They plugged it in and out a couple times. Everything is going wrong for this guy. And they cannot buy a break. Roger Pinsky literally on the radio saying, sorry, sorry. Will Power's been hanging out the back of the lead lap here, and that caution certainly helped him. They didn't get all the tires on. These will be the red tires for Will Power, planning on running, him, running them about five laps or so. But again, he has a gearbox issue, has to literally come all the way out of the gas to downshift, and not a fun day for Will Power. Still, we're only at lap 18. He's still on the lead lap. And if anybody can make the magic happen, it's Team Penske. Fellas, what do you do when you have a, a season like this where it seems nothing can go right? You just keep telling yourself and reassuring yourself that it will turn around eventually? It's like anything else in sports. You have to take each opportunity, each race, each session as if it's the start of a new season and keep the negativity out of your mind. All right, that's Spencer Pickett's Ed Carpenter Racing, Chevrolet getting picked up there on the hook. We'll go racing when we come back. Sunday, June 30, NASCAR returns to the networks of NBC. Get ready to gas it up as the sport's top drivers race to the championship. That's NASCAR returning on NBC and NBCSN starting June 30 forward to that. Meanwhile, we've got some business to attend to here in Detroit. Welcome back. IndyCars here on Bell Isle. And up front, there is a youngster who raced in his formative years in Europe, came back to America after falling foul of a few rules, just to say the least, in Europe, and got a second chance at his racing career here in the U.S. And Santino Ferrucci, who won the Indy 500 Rookie of the Year Award last weekend, Kev, is making the most of that second chance. He is leading here at Detroit. He was one of only three to start on the primary, so he hasn't needed to stop at this point. His engineer, Mike Cannon, just told me, we want to stay out as long as we can. You must use the reds for two laps. We want to make that stint as short as it can be, Marty. Let's chat real quick with Ricardo Nault. Uh, how much consideration did you give to pitting there and not staying out? Oh, we gave him a lot of consideration, you know. The reds tires don't seem to be holding up, so, uh, and we have to go to them. <laughs> So we think we're going to try to run like Stink and see if we can gap out everybody a little bit before we come and take him. Graham Ray Hall started the back of the field. Remember that? He is in second. Run like Stink. I think that's a pretty good thing, right, Lee? So Ricardo, you heard Ricardo not that the strategist for Graham Ray Hall just saying, uh, talking about the Reds and we have to run them. For those of you new to IndyCar racing, two tire compounds, the harder black walled Firestones and then the red walled si uh, softer compound. And it is IndyCar rules that you must run each compound at least once in a race. So that's what he was talking about. Ready to go racing. Ray Hall was all over Santino Ferrucci. It's a couple of Hondas at the front of the pack, but Ferrucci has gone. Nice restart, got on it a little bit sideways, but Ray Hall right there, a car Whoa. locking up right there. I believe that was Veach locked up a little bit as he gets a run. I think it was Rosenquist almost got in the back of Colton Herta going into turn one as Alexander Rossi in Rossi. that blue and yellow car is charging on Newgard. And here comes Zach Veach in the black and yellow car. If Pato Award back on track right there got passed by Veach. These guys got to run as hard as they can because you don't want to put those reds on for too long. They're going to have to time that stop, guys, till the last 10 laps because that basically after lap 10, those things just fall off the face of the earth in terms of performance. And, oh, something's going on back there. Pass that's on the back straight That's away. Will Power on reds. Will Power on fresh reds. Knows he has to make a mark. Oh. Look at Sato. Takuma Sato on the inside of Marcus Ericsson. The silver Verizon car there is Will Power. There's Sato, finished on the podium yesterday. On board with Ryan hunter -Ray. Power's on reds. He's going to be in a world of hurt in about 10 or 12 laps when those things go off. Everybody else right now on blacks. But in the meantime, Power's going to make everything he can out of those softer red tires because they are faster right now. That's the tire you qualified on. 
think about this. Dixon was up front controlling the pace, trying to go easy on them. This guy's driving the wheels off the car right now. He could wear those things out in six laps. Well, they're, they're, they're going to get worn out for sure. Marty, what do you think Will Power is going to do? How long will he run these reds? Use your overtake. There's Roger Pinsky on the radio. How about five laps? That's all the plan for Will Power. They want these reds off as soon as they can get them off. So they told them five laps. That's all you got to do on these reds. Go as hard as you can, and Power is working on Marco Andretti for 13th. bumpy this track is look at the rear suspension how much it moves up and down just going down the straightaway and then when you watch it get down in here in the corner and you get into this bumpy section around the fountain watch the suspension deflection it droops as all the weight goes forward onto the nose of the car and you can really appreciate how soft the spring rate is here compared to indianapolis last weekend you could barely see that suspension move at Indy, so soft springs to soak up the bumps and keep the tire on the ground. Further back, Ed Jones in the black number 20, then Matthias Lace, the bright blue car, is Max Chilton. Pagano back out, he's minus 12 laps, down 12 laps to the field. Hunter Ray with a run, looking inside of Marcus Erickson for turn one. Hunter Ray backs off in that yellow DHL car. Up front, Graham Rahal is not letting Santino Ferrucci get away, only half a second between first and second on track. And then Joseph Newgarden, the championship points leader, is running third. Alexander Rossi, oh, inside power on Andretti. Nice move. Power making moves, but how long will those reds last? Marty, you said five laps, but I'm liking the way Will Power's charging through the field. I think you keep him out until he says that they've fallen off. Driver have a veto vote, Townsend? Can you just stay out as long as you want? Driver has something very powerful called the steering wheel and pedals compared to the headset of the team owner. Let's see how this pass happened. He surprised Marco Andretti in turn three. Marco keeps it clean and off goes power in pursuit of Ryan Hunter Ray. Will Power now pushing forward, trying to catch Hunter Ray on those red tires. The performance and the grip is much better on reds, but we've already seen that they really go bad after about six to eight laps. So how long can he hang on? Up front, this is Santino Ferrucci. Look at the train starting to form now behind the youngster. Ray Hall wants a shot. Newgarden wants a shot. Rossi, Hinchcliffe. Hitchcliffe felt as though they didn't get rewarded for their efforts yesterday, and he's correct. It was a tough day in the wet, slippery conditions. There is the Canadian. Colton Herter right behind him, too, having a good day. Yesterday was a struggle. He qualified really well, but in the rain, he just didn't have any rear grip. Well, consider this on James Hinchcliffe. He runs fifth, and he started fifth, but remember, he runs effectively third on the road of those who made pit stops. So he made an excellent pit stop along with Newgarden Rossi. You see him there in fifth. That group of three and those behind made those initial pit stops. So looking pretty good on the road. Yesterday, as you mentioned, Lee, said he should have been more rewarded for kind of the car and the speed that they had. Now with the dry line on the racetrack, they're feeling very racy. And there's the pit stop that paid off for Aero Schmidt, Peterson, and Hinchcliffe. Still in search of his first podium of the year. It's looking good here today, just across the river from Canada. Maybe Hitch can notch one up in the Arrow Schmidt-Peterson Honda. So lap 25, you start to factor in a few of those yellow laps. I would expect Ferrucci maybe around lap 29 or 30 Good along job, with Graham Rahal. And then Newgard Rossi, Hinchcliffe, Herta, they should be able to go maybe an extra lap or two past that. Ferrucci pulling a small gap now to Rahal. Eight tenths of a second, but power has hit the pit lane. Those tires are done. True to their word, five green flag laps. They told them to wait on the fuel. They got all of the Speedway fuel in the car. Those red sidewall fire stones, boy, they add speed, don't they? But they fall off quickly. Will Power going to the primary tires here. That's going to put him all the way to the back of the pack now. He fell all the way back down. Speaking of speed, Santino Ferrucci has just clocked this man here, the Clydell Honda. The Dale Coin Racing, he has just logged the second quickest lap of the race. 
he's gapping Ray Hall. He's pulled a nice little gap on him. Ray Hall has got Newgarden all over the back of him, and this young kid's just cruising, doing a nice job. Look at the gap. And they're probably telling Ferrucci, push hard. This is the green flag lap pit sequence about to come up. And nothing's going to break this young guy's stride. He's going strong. Back at the Detroit Grand Prix, where a quick pit stop here. And it's taking a little bit longer for Alexander Rossi. That was 8.8 .8 seconds. There was a slight delay on the left front tire. Again, this is pit strategy to pit a little bit earlier than those he's racing with. That is how Joseph Newgarden got a position on him yesterday. But the first of the leaders, those up there at front that have made one pit stop, he's the first to show his hand here on pit road. And I like that strategy for Rossi because it gets him out in clean air. There's a nice gap. There's Pagino in front who's quick. So that might make the difference on the undercut. Outside front guy had an issue getting the wheel on. It was a little bit of a long stop. We'll see if that costs him a position or two, but he's got to rip off some qualifying laps here if he's going to make this work. Well, you think about he's ostensibly racing this man on screen, Joseph Newgarden. He's got to get past Simon Pagenaud, Penske teammate. Simon's not going to make that easy for Alexander Rossi. Here's your speedway lap leaders, Ferrucci 14, Dixon 12, Newgarden 1, and Newgarden comes in just like Rossi. So this will be a battle, Newgarden versus Rossi. Watch the team Penske pit stop. So we're going to watch where he comes back at in relation to Alexander Rossi. Fresh Firestone, Speedway Fuel. The first stop was fantastic. This is stop number two. A little change of front wing. Newgarden is back out. Guys, watch where he comes back out on track. Rossi's just coming through turn 14 right, right turn now. Three. Rossi's coming to the line. Look to the right. There's Alexander. So Joseph Newgarden should get out. No worries out in front of the Napa well, Honda. Well, be close. Oh, tires, though, but he's got enough gap there. But and he's, he's got, got his those, teammate. Got to get those tires up to temp. And he has his teammate Pagano sandwiched in between. So, so far looking very good for Newgarden. Pushing further back, Colton Herta just pinned as well. I'm fascinated to watch this, watch this exchange that is coming up between Alexander Rossi and Simon Pagano. Pagano, who's very down in 20th position after being caught up in that opening lap collision and then having to go back to the team's haul up and make repairs on his Penske Chevrolet and then get back out. We'll see how that goes down. Meanwhile, this has been a dream run for Santino Ferrucci out in front. He stays out and he's got his biggest lead so far of 1.6 seconds. Hitchcliffe is kind of the effective leader right now. He's on the same strategy as Newgarden and he's catching up the back of these guys, turning pretty good laps. So let's see what happens on the stop if he jumps ahead of both of these guys. would be a big day for James Hinchcliffe if he could pull off a win here in Detroit. Kevin, what's what happened there with Spencer Piggott in the crash earlier? Yeah, he had cycled up to second. Spencer, tell us about the contact from behind. What happened? Yeah, clearly got uh, hit from behind trying to enter pit lane. You know, the, the red tires had, had really fallen off. I think it was obvious for everyone to see. And, you know, Scott and I were really struggling. All the other drivers were kind of passing us uh, extremely easily. So it was only a matter of time. And, um, you know, unfortunately, tried to enter pit lane. I guess Sebastian thought I was uh, not doing that and, um, you know, clearly misjudged the distance. So it's, it's unfortunate at that point, you know, the rear tires were just kind of gone and, you know, having to break early for the corners and, and pit entrance might have caught him off. I'm not sure, but uh, really disappointed for everyone at Ed Carpenter Racing, Auto Geek, Chevrolet. Uh, you know, I think we had a, a pretty good car and uh, through no fault our owner are taken out of it. Unfortunately, an early exit for Spencer Piggott in what could have been a good day. Rossi and Newgarden are in a little bit of traffic right now. I think that this might play out for Hinchcliffe because he's been running pretty clean, fast laps. But we'll, we'll have to see, see how long until he comes in, Townsend. Ferrucci getting pretty good mileage with that Honda. So does Graham Rahal. Look at, there's the traffic. Yeah. These guys are going to be holding these guys up. So Hinchcliffe might have a great opportunity to leapfrog ahead of these guys by ripping off some fast laps. That's Max Chilton in the 59. And 
That is exactly what the five team for James Hinchcliffe. We watched this battle as you're talking about, and Rossi loses a little bit of pace here in that traffic. That's exactly why they are leaving James Hinchcliffe out on course. They say, we have clean air right now. We're going to pit in two or three laps, but they can watch the same video thinking those who they're racing against are being held up, and we're going to stay out there and get all the gap we can. Last weekend, we saw furious Alexander Rossi at traffic, and I promise you the anger is riding rising as Rossi goes by to try to catch back up to Newgarden. Paul, I think you're right, though, on Hinchcliffe. Yeah, this looking is looking good for him right traffic, now. This traffic is not helping the cause for these guys. This is not what you want when the leader is out front. Here's Graham, Marty. First stop of the day, Ricardo Nault was not kidding. He said, we're going to stay on these primary tires as long as we can. They're going to put on the red sidewall firestones again. They are quicker, but they do not last very long at all. So they'll have some speed initially here for Graham Ray Hall. First stop of the day coming at lap 32. They're telling him now, get all you can right here. We'll see where he blends out. And that's the problem for Ferrucci and Ray Hall. They have to run the reds, and it's going to force an extra stop. Most likely. So let's see how he this came out in back front out. of. He came out in front of Newgarden and Rossi, so he was able to stay ahead. They didn't leapfrog. Great work from the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan team. Santino Ferrucci, the only one in the race who is yet to pit. I think Hinchcliffe's going to come out in the lead in this deal, or Santino. Santino's got a nice gap right now, and with a clean pit stop. Either of these two guys could still cycle to the front. He's got 25 seconds, he being Santino Ferrucci. 25 seconds over Graham Rahal, 26 and a half over Newgarden. And it's about 23, 24 seconds lost on pit lane, depending on how fast the pit stop is. Ferrucci just continues to stretch this run. His, Michael his Cannon. engineer said. All right, and now we will find out if, in fact, Paul Tracy is correct, if Hinchcliffe will retain the lead. They're going to try to get a half a turn of front wing if they have time. Oh, they had to hold the gun just for a moment. That slowed Hinchcliffe just a little while. They cleared the gun, but it's A-OK. -okay. Let's see how he bleeds out. It's going to be tight because uh, Joseph Newgarden and, and Alexander, Alexander Rossi are here, right here. They're going to blow by Hinchcliffe, I think, going to turn three, oh, if not before. Oh. Cuts him right off. He cut him right off on the exit, but now he's got to hold the back. He'll hold that inside line down into turn three. Rossi to the inside, oh, Newgarden no. is inside. Oh, oh. How did Rossi avoid? Oh, oh, no. oh, oh what Rossi a brilliant keeps job. Going. Unbelievable stuff. Brilliant job from Rossi to keep it going. The championship leader is this, in the wall. This hurts Santino, full course caution, and he hasn't been it yet. Look at Newgarden, he is furious. Oh, man. Rossi eliminates two of his competition with one move without hitting anybody. That was Hinchcliffe on cold tires trying to force it down in there. It was all set up on the pit exit. When Hinchcliffe came out, he went straight for the race line, and then the two cars behind on hot tires at speed dove in there. New Garden signaling, push me back, but it's going to take gone. a while because Suspension. those are fit together like a puzzle piece. Suspension arm right here is bent. I just saw on the camera angle. If we get that camera angle back, his suspension is bent. And this is a disaster now for the championship leader. These cars are interlocked now. It's going to be tough to get them apart. This also really helps Scott Dixon. He might be able to make it on just one more stop, right here. depending on how long the, the yellow is. Look at that. Suspension arm is bent right there. So that's going to cause game over. Game over or change that, which is going to take multiple laps. So let's go back to the stop and the release. James Hinchcliffe, left of your screen, exiting pit lane. Here comes Graham Rahal. He's through, no worries. But Hinchcliffe out there, and he knows the challenge is coming and wants to get that position. And then it's on. Once you clear the white line of the pit lane exit, you could go right into the line. And he did. And Rossi saw the opportunity, but he backed out. So really, Newgarden loses it right there. They all kind of lose it, everybody. Actually, Hinchcliffe was the most under control. Take back what I said earlier, because Newgarden spins, and Rossi does a brilliant job as we ride on board with Hinch. Yeah, I don't really put any blame on Rossi at all. He, ba he backed out of it, but he still lost control of the rear of the car. Newgarden just got in there super deep and lost the rear on the brakes. Right there, he's sideways. If anything, Rossi pushed Hinchcliffe into Newgarden with the rear. He did. Hit Hinchcliffe. 
Hensley would have been able to keep going, but he got he got slammed into Joseph Newgarden. Rosenquist slides through there. Yes. Yes. That's Felix Rosenquist's team. Yes. The NTT data guys and the championship leader cannot believe it. Newgarden out of his car and out of the race. High drama in Detroit Rock City. Newgarden still thinks his car is okay and he can get it back, but I don't think he saw what you saw, Paul, in the right front suspension. Look at, he's still negotiating, Newgarden is, with the AMR safety team. And now Ferrucci has to pin under yellow and he'll go to the back of the line. This really hurt him because if he'd have come in, I think he'd have still retained the lead. This yellow really cost him. And guess who's at the top? Scott Dixon. Great start to this race. Wild race. And led 13 laps, and now he finds himself back up the top of the order. Scott Dixon last pitted on lap 14. He needs to get to about 27 laps to go to make it to the end. Bent rear wing for Hinchcliffe. No front wing, major repairs to be done. How do you think that thing's handling right now? What a wild day. Newgarden on the inside, he loses it. Hinchcliffe gets hit. Rossi able to continue. You're watching NBC's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Honda, an official vehicle of the NTT IndyCar series. United Rentals, official equipment rental services provider of IndyCar. Join the race to help veterans at turnsfortroops.com. And by Gainbridge. Gainbridge, grow your savings with confidence. During that last commercial break, I was just thinking how much has happened here on Belle Isle so far today. And guys, we have only just reached the halfway point of this second race. This is a wilder race today in the dry Townsend than it was yesterday in the pouring rain and the drying line and conditions that were way tougher than today. These guys have gotten super aggressive today. Well, because the track is dry left to right and that opens up opportunity. You guys get hungry to make moves and, and uh, leads potentially the fireworks that we've seen already. Kumasato in the MyJack Honda, he's third, which is exactly where he finished yesterday and where he finished a week ago at the Indy 500. The Japanese driver is having a really solid 2019 season. So, for those of you maybe just turning on, let's get you through what has happened so far in the first half of the race. How about the first lap of the race? Multi-car pileup affecting the Indy 500 winner, Simon Pagano. Turn three, Townsend, has been the danger zone. That's where all the action has gone down today. This was a big hit there for Simon Pagano, who Watch got this. turned around and had a gearbox problem. Off to your right, you'll see Tony Kanaan just mad at push everybody, at least attempt to push everybody out of the way. Scott Yellow Dixon. flags out. Several guys opt to pit on that lap two caution. Simon Pagano gets the repairs done, but he's down 12 laps now. But any points, whatever you can get. Now, so finally, race leader Scott Dixon pits, but Spencer Piggott gets hit by Sebastian Bourdais in a scary incident. Neither driver hurt. Bourdais trying to make a move. Piggott trying to get to pit lane. And Dixon on pit lane when the caution comes out. And Hitchcliffe comes out of the pits, cold tires. Newgarden and Rossi trying to make a move. They both spin out. Rossi keeps going, but here they come slicing down the inside and can't control it for the corner. And Rossi gets into James Hitchcliffe there and squashes him into Joseph Newgarden and Felix Rosenquist's team were pretty delighted by that. They get his guy further up into the top 10. But Joseph Newgarden not delighted. He's with Marty Snyder. And he is hot, Lee. So I want to back up to Hinchcliffe jumping in front of you, really coming in the blend line there. Do you think that was a fair move? Uh, I mean, you know, whether that was right or not where he placed his car. And that's what happened. He checked me up. And I had to go down a gear, and then we're in just a bad situation with, with Rossi behind us. Um, you know, I can't blame anyone. It's my fault. It's, it's ultimately my fault with the way this happened. But, you know, I thought he didn't have to come straight across the track. Um, I just got, you know, I got held up. But it, it's still my fault. I should have made a better decision there. Obviously, it's not the right thing that I did, and that's on me. So um, I feel bad. It hurts in the moment. I feel, feel sorry for my guys, sorry, sorry to my team. Um, sorry to Chevrolet. You know, we had a good day yesterday. We wanted to have another good day today. I actually thought we were fine, and then 
I think I just picked up too much marbles on the inside. Um, it just was too slick. And then I, as soon as I tried to turn the rear, I lost the rear. You know, I think I think I just picked up too much debris. So, you know, it's a mistake. Um, Should have analyzed that a little bit better. Should have gone left, not right. Uh, that's on me. The, the one that kind of got everybody, got you and Hinch at the same time, were you saying you should have had more patience there? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, I should have just made a better decision. I, I probably should have gone left instead of, you know, he's guarding in the middle. That pushes me all the way to the inside line, which is where, you know, all the debris at. Uh, and the, the, the pickup that you get on the tires, it's going to, it's going to cause a problem for you, you know, and it did in the middle of the corner. You saw even Rossi lost it, and we all lost it in the middle of the corner. So um, that's what happens when you go that that far inside. I should have gone left, and maybe it would have worked out better. But, you know, it's a woulda, coulda, shoulda. Hindsight's always 20-20. It shows you how battling for every inch on the racetrack is everything, Lee. Joseph Newgarden out after winning yesterday. And what a refreshingly honest uh, outlook. And for young athletes, if you're watching that, learn from that. Joseph doesn't blame anybody else. It says he should have made a better decision. That's big. That's big. But for the record, I'm not crazy about the practice of leaving pit lane and shooting directly across into a 100 mile an hour corner. I don't know, man. It's within the rules, so all's fair in love and war. No penalties. So thought we were ready to go racing, but uh, obviously uh, one of the wreckers is still on the track. Uh, aerial coverage today brought to you by the Mullen Kiantu K50 electric automobile. Pretty cool car. And thanks, because we've had some fabulous uh, aerial coverage all weekend long. It's been busy with the uh, first race in the NTT IndyCar Series yesterday, an IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship race. We should say that our man in the middle here, PT, Townsend Bell, stood on the podium in the GT Daytona class. Well done, Townsend. Oh, don't be shy, don't be shy, it was fun. a great drive. Well, podiums are nice, but wins are what we want. But luckily our teammate car, Jack Hawksworth, did an awesome job to take the win. We ride back on board with Ryan Hunter Ray. Kevin? Yesterday was a wild day for Hunter Ray. He had a spin uh, simply because the brakes were not working properly, and it was even worse in the wet. It worked when he put full pressure down, but not lightly. Will they change the brake system? That's good. He was one of those that thought he had damage earlier, didn't, and now the timing of the cautions has cycled him up to the front, and he's on a similar strategy to many. Stopped the last time on 17. Ray Gosselin, his engineer, said, you are good to go hard the rest of the way and get it done on one more stop. He's on the same strategy as second place Marcus Erickson, third Third place to Kumasato and his teammate behind him, Marco Andretti. So that's pretty good. Scott Dixon's three laps worse off as far as fuel. He pitted on lap 14. The guys chasing him pitted three laps later on 17. Let's talk about Alexander Rossi for a moment. Yes, why don't we? Because I just checked with the team. Obviously, his lightning quick reactions to get the car moving again, but there was definite contact. So I checked with the team. They say on the data, no damage to that car. They feel that Alexander Rossi, once we go back to green here, is going to be able to light it up and get his pace back again. That was an incredible scenario in turn number three, and the way he just immediately got into gear seemed like it was just instinctive. Ready to go racing? You bet. Let's do it. Sun shining here in Detroit. Beautiful day, and we're into the second half of this Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix. Prix. Let's go. Scott Dixon, the five-time and reigning series champ at the front. Prime opportunity, Townsend, for Dixon to capitalize on Newgarden's misfortune, scrape back up in the points. Well, everybody will be looking to make it to at least about lap 45 before they make their last stop. Scott Dixon looking to hold on and more drama down here in three as Rosenquist looks inside Bourdais. See that neon, neon yellow car there of Sebastian Bourdais? Give credit to Dale Coyne, Vassa Sullivan Racing, who, and, and Craig Hampson, his engineer and the crew. The damage on the front after hitting Spencer Pickett, they kept him on the lead lap. He had to cycle around without any front wing assembly. And here he is, C. Bass is sitting seven. On the lead lap, that front end was 10 feet in the air about 30 minutes ago, Paul. Rossi right now is desperate to get by Rosenquist. He needs to try to work his way back towards the front. But Dixon now pulls out to about an eight-tenth of a second gap over Erickson. And this is a great run for Erickson. He's had a very 
frustrating year so far this year. A lot of little silly mistakes, but look at this coming on the front straight away. Piggott peels in to go to the pits, and Bordet doesn't know he's going there, and then wham, hits him. And that thing does a 130 mile an hour wheelie down the front straightaway. And destroys the front end. The fact that they fixed it, and he's still competitive. He's just said Lee is, is frankly a miracle. So right now, 29 laps to go as Rossi pushes Rosenquist out of the way. Rossi's on the charge. He's driving angry again. He knows he needs to get back up to the front. That little short spin has cost him some positions. Further back, I think we're going to see somebody start to gamble in the next couple of laps and be the first to make the last stop as Will Power is still on the charge. Colton Herta having a look on Max Chilton. And in behind is Santino Ferrucci, who has led the most laps in this race. Although that's about to change as Scott Dixon on the next cir uh, circuit will draw level. Riding on the Gallagher Chevrolet for Carlin Racing, Max Chilton, his teammate, Pato Award, was involved in that lap one multi-car incident. Award is further back in 16th. Colton oh. Herter on the inside. Nice move. And here comes Ferrucci, has to back out. No way through there. Pato right. Award now on the back of Ferrucci. But Award is a lap down from that contact on the first lap of the race. And last car in this line, Simon Pagino running 19th. Hey, listen, it was worthwhile getting the car back to the team area, getting it fixed. Simon, if he, even if he doesn't improve on 19th, he's still going to get 11 points. Ferrucci still runs on reds. That last yellow helped Ferrucci. It shortened the time he had to run on red tires and angers. You see the back end start to step out. He's going to try to make a run on Chilton now going into three. Pop Here he out. goes. No, Chilton defends a little bit. Chilton kind of weaving back and forth. Ferrucci was unsure of what to do right there. Hinchcliffe was able to get Pato Award. You may have noticed that. It was a pretty nice move. It's a spot right here. You can dive in right there. Actually, he did not. I take that back. It looked like he was trying to work on Pato Award. He still is. Ferrucci on the push to pass as he comes around the outside. Nicely done. Those reds are still fast. Up front, Dixon boasts a 1.6 second lead over Marcus Ericsson. start to feel the distance. 43 laps on the hot concrete, getting banged around. Look at his knees jump around as we ride back on board with Scott Dixon, who's sitting pretty right now. So violent, this track. It abuses the drivers, and you don't just get it once, you get it twice in this duel in Detroit. Colton Herter and Santino Ferrucci, the most recent stoppers with 26 laps to go here in Detroit. And that'll be the last pit stops for those two cars. So that puts Scott Dixon and the leaders in the danger zone. Dixon leads, but if a yellow door come right now, he'd have to shuffle to the back. I wonder if they'll bring him in to protect that lead. Well, the accident last time happened during the pit stop cycles with Hinchcliffe and Newgarden, so you can't hang out for too long. Does he come to the pit? He does. Smart call. What about Arrow Schmidt Peterson? They do not bring Marcus Erickson in. They want to stay out and gamble for the win on the overcut against Scott Dixon, a five-time champion. The rookie, Erickson, going for the win. They play in this stop for Scott Dixon a couple of laps ago. Mike Hole told him to push for the final two laps of this run. 25 to go. They'll be able to make it all the way from here. Kevin, no changes to the chassis at all and primary tires. I Ryan want Hunter Ray and Andretti Autosport also in, hoping this is their final stop and a good one. Seven and a half seconds for Hunter Ray. Wouldn't that be quite the story for Scott Dixon? 
a day after he crashed by himself, an unforced error. He hasn't had a DNF, a non-finish in two years. He hasn't crashed by himself in four years. And within 24 hours, could he come back to win? Or will it be a rookie victory in the hands of Swedish driver Marcus Ericsson, the former F1 pilot? Rossi now up to fourth. Ericsson needs to hustle. This is so important, these last few corners. You can see the hands furiously working behind the wheel, doing everything he can to make this the fastest in lap in his rookie year. Hit this lap, hit this lap. He's on his way in. Pressure now on the Arrow Schmidt Peterson team to deliver a clean, efficient stop. Here he comes. About 22 seconds on pit lane. The gap to Dixon, 23 seconds. Kevin? Takuma Sato is following behind him. That's one, two. Marcus Erickson goes around Sato's tires. Sato has a clean in. Let's see if that makes a difference. Speedway fuel, Firestones. And he's going to have to wait just a moment for a car passing by in the left hand. Sato also going to release. Erickson easily wins that race. But what's the blend look like? Dixon's gone. There he is right there. Go Scott hard. goes Go by. Hard. Good stop from Arrow Schmidt Peterson. But Scott Dixon too quick. All right. You're Inch in front, behind. though, that's the teammate here. to Marcus Erickson, who's in a position right now to help back up Scott Dixon to Marcus Erickson. Erickson won the pit stop competition, his team at Indianapolis 500, but that one just was not quick enough. Dixon beat him to the exit there, but that's still a good position for Erickson to be in. In fairness, at the time when this man here, Scott Dixon in the PNC back Honda pitted, he did have a 1.6, 1.7 second advantage on track before pitting over Erickson. Stays about there. Erickson may be a little slower now because of the outlap on cold tires. So effectively, Dixon increased his lead in that sequence. Kevin, you called it on pit lane. They had to hold up for a car that was passing and that probably cost him a second. And after all that trouble Powers had, he is now cycled to the front in the lead. We'll wait to see what their strategy is as there's Will Power going by the, the pit exit. So he's going another lap and he's working it hard. Let's see what the strategy ends up being. Power's last pit stop was lap 24. So he's going to be getting into his window in the next four or five laps. He still has a stop and he still has to hang on as the rear of that Verizon 12 all over the place. He's hustling it around. He knows he's got to make time now. He's got a clear road, no traffic, and he has to lay down some flyer laps. If you look at the gap right now, a 22-second stop for Will Power would put him back around Ryan hunter Ray and Alexander Rossi. You guys mentioned it's been since lap 24 since Will Powers on pit road. He said, man, I need some tires right now. But he has done a masterful job with the gearbox issues they have on the 12 car. The early spin, keeping it out front, leading laps. They're going to come in about two laps, two to three laps for Will Power, who's leading right now. The Auto Nation on board for Ryan Hunter Rice, sitting sixth. underscore just how hard Will Power is driving up front. The driver of the number 12 Verizon Chevy has just laid down the fastest lap of the race. There you see Ed Jones in the 20 car just ahead of Takuma Sato. Jones a little bit off sequence. He would have to go 33 laps since his last stop to make it to the finish and I think it would take a ton of yellow for Ed Jones to make it. He'll have to save fuel if no yellows come or more than likely make another stop. There you see the push to pass remaining. That always factors into things in the closing laps. Push to pass allocation here, 150 seconds for the duration of the race. It can be deployed in it's up to as many as 15 second bursts. Gives you about an extra 80 horsepower. He's had a fun run. He has executed some really cool passes throughout this second race here in Detroit at the weekend. And the Auto Nation Honda race leader Will Powers in, Marty. 
Yeah, he'd had enough of that run. He comes in. It's going to be primary Firestone tires here, Speedway Fuel. I did check in with Ed Jones' team. They're obviously short, but they can go, they think, until about lap 60. So about another 11 laps for Ed Jones, who's currently sitting in fourth position. But Will Power, the leader, comes to pit road and gets and up the lead. And here's the blend. Look at this battle for position. This is just like what we saw with Newgarden and Rossi. This time it's Power blending with Sato and Hunter Ray. Power. Power takes the inside line. Sato goes to the left like Joseph Newgarden said he should. And he's going to lose a position because Hunter Ray's been able to go up the inside. Perfect nice job of the over-under by Ryan Hunter Ray. And now he's going to attack Power at the next corner. The uphill breaking it over the bridge oh. here. But he lost a little ground. And Rossi slices down the inside of Sato. Sato loses three positions in three corners. Hunter Ray's got a run on Power. Will he go inside or outside? Here comes a hungry Marco Andretti on the back stretch. Look at these two guys side by side. Power will hang on. Power has come all the way from the back now up to fourth place. Wow. And Ed Jones is in kind of a weird space. So Power could ostensibly be as high as third. Well, and, and he's only eight seconds back of Marcus Erickson. I would not put in past Will Power to make up eight seconds over 20 laps to close this race. Will Power is confident again. This is the drive that he's been waiting for. Check this out for a drive. Down to turn three. Takuma Sato off to the left. Will Power off to the right. This is Ryan hunter Ray. See ya. Just set that up, let those guys over slow for the corner, and just did a perfectly executed over under pass. How about Rossi? Sato around How about Rossi? the outside right there, nearly brushes the wall, but has position coming onto the back straightaway. Brilliant move once again from Alexander Rossi. That turn five is so narrow. Here's Graham Rahal center of the picture, the United Rentals Honda, Felix Rosen, Chris DeHead, the bright yellow Gainbridge car is Zach Beach. So you're talking here about 10th, 9th, 10th, 11th. Wow, Graham having a look there on Rosenquist. What a day Rosenquist has had. Battles all over the track. And Zach Beach has also been strong. Talking with four-time series champion, three-time Indy 500 winner Dario Franchini before the broadcast on pit lane. And he said, Rosen, because he acts as a mentor and driver coach to Felix Rosenquist at Chip Ganassi Racing. And he said, after the first day, Rosenquist said to me, I'm driving as hard as I can and I'm just not fast. And Dario had to say, go away, let's have a think about it, come back. And he had a pretty good day yesterday, almost got his maiden podium. Marty? Hey, Lee, let's take you through the field. Scott Dixon is up front and not very happy with lap traffic either. He's kind of asking the team to help him a little bit. And the game bridge through the field. Scott Dixon is leading and he has a little extra coaching help literally on his timing stand today. Mike Tomlin, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, is on the timing stand, kind of visiting with Chip Ganassi. There he is hanging out with Chip. See the boss in the background and the coach in the foreground. Scott Dixon said, cool to have a guy who's won a Super Bowl here hanging out with us this weekend, Kevin. Marty, what about Marcus Erickson, rookie at IndyCar after five years in Formula One, mostly running in the back, now running in the front, and he's on the same strategy as Dixon. There you see him. He's still about two and a half seconds behind, but what a run from where he started in 12th. And keep in mind, this is the first time he's ever seen a track for the second time after racing yesterday. So Erickson having his best day, Marty. Nice strategy play for Ed Jones, currently sitting in the third position. Kevin, I did check in with team owner Ed Carpenter a moment ago. Again, they can go a little bit further, but these guys getting themselves up front. He said, you know, Ed Carpenter said, we're learning what Ed Jones needs out of a race car, how he manages a race, what they're learning right now. He's doing a fantastic job running in third. Will Power is doing a terrific job in the 12 car. Remember, he was part of the caution at lap two. Has gearbox issues. You see a pass for Power. There he goes, getting another spot. Power is doing amazing things in that car. Driving inspired today. He's up to third, Kevin. So now we move a couple of spots behind Power for the moment. And that yellow and red DHL car of Ryan hunter Ray. Now, he pitted the same lap as Scott Dixon, and he's been told a fuel number at this point. Not a terribly difficult fuel number, but still watching just a little bit to get to the finish, Jan. 
And it's a great battle as you see Ryan Hunter Ray trying to work through and right behind of course is his teammate Alexander Rossi. He pitted Kevin one lap later than did Ryan Hunter Ray so he will have a little more fuel to use. Again we've seen him slicing and dicing and quite amazing considering that car has had some contact in that turn three incident. Kevin. This has really been a pretty remarkable turnaround for Takuma Sato who said the car was still not to his liking after qualifying this morning. He told me we've been experimenting today. We tried a lot of different things. Yesterday the rain helped him to a podium finish. Today it's straight out speed. Sato has found something running seventh right now Jan. And Marco Andretti is having as Lee said earlier a great day at the office starting 19th working his way up right now in ninth position has given us some great onboard looks today as well as yesterday when he was the first to go out on slick tires and show the kind of car control that he has. But I think he's chalking this up, Marty. It's a pretty good day at the office. Hey, Jan and Shannon with Felix Rosenquist coming into the weekend. He said, you know what? I was just happy to have the Indy 500 behind me. Remember that had that crash, did not run well in the race either. He said, but that experience is going to help me next week when we go to the very fast high banks at Texas Motor Speedway. And finishing fourth yesterday, oh, James Hinchcliffe stopped on the track, Lee. Wow, this was shaping up to be such a good day for James Hinchcliffe and he was caught up in that incident with Joseph Newgarden, championship leader. Newgarden is out of the race and Alexander Rossi, what has happened this time to Huge. the Arrow Honda driver? Huge for Will Power, Paul. This is going to give angry, fast Will Power a restart if this goes yellow and a chance to win. It'll close up the gap. So, oh. Joseph Newgarden is back in the Hitachi Chevrolet, not out of the race. The team got it fixed. He's back in the race. So that's two cars at Team Penske that the captain's men have fixed today. Awesome team effort. Simon Pagano was the first, and now Joseph Newgarden, championship leader, is back out. Here's what happened to Hinchcliffe. Have a listen. No power, just off song, not going anywhere. So Dead dead oh. so i don't know what he's looking for to get get a tow it's a long way back to the pits from where he is to get a flat tow all the way back there that was very odd for the motor to just shut off on its own kind of surprised to see them send newgarden out because he's 21 laps down and there's only 15 laps left in the race he might go head hunting for somebody he's in 19th and he's nine laps behind his own teammate simon pagino what an eventful weekend here in the Motor City. I've been pleased to bring you some fabulous aerial coverage today, and that's being brought to us all by the Mullen Kiantu K50 electric automobile. Thank you to Mullen. Now, this is round eight of 17 in the NTT IndyCar series and if you are a huge IndyCar fan and you haven't got NBC Sports Gold just yet you can you can get even more IndyCar with the IndyCar Pass on NBC Sports Gold watch every qualifying and practice live and on demand and you can get it by visiting NBCSports.com slash IndyCar right now welcome back folks to Detroit Lee Diffie Townsend Bell Paul Tracy with you on what has been a highly entertaining weekend in Michigan Scott Dixon leads the way under caution. This is for the fourth time in this race. Marcus Erickson, the rookie for Arrow Schmidt Peterson, is in second. Will Power, how on earth he is in third place after everything that has happened to him today. What a comeback drive from the Team Penske driver who has only had one podium this year. And Ryan Hunter Ray, we were just riding with him. RHR's in fourth. Alexander Rossi's in fifth. This has been. A race that has seen it all. Just shows you how Penske Racing keeps digging. They repair re damaged cars and they just keep racing till the checkered flag comes out. I want to show you a couple of examples of what a hotbed of action turn three has been. We talked about it at the start of the race. It's a nice wide braking zone. Gives you a lot of options if you have a run. And watch this blend situation. Hinchcliffe coming out on cold tires. He's racing Newgard. Newgard checks up. Here comes Alexander Rossi. So you have the lead car on cold tri tires trying to break as late as possible. And these two hungry Americans coming at him, and it all goes wrong for all three of them. Then, on the last sequence, 
Here comes Will Power out of the pits. You have Sato, Hunter Ray, and Alexander Rossi on warm tires. And two similar, similar incidents, very different outcomes. Because look at Ryan Hunter Ray in the yellow and red DHL Honda. He was able to nip up the inside there, get by, take off. And here comes Alexander Rossi, fourth car in shot. He wants a shot there around the outside of Takuma Sato. And it, if you didn't see it, Rossi in turn three just held back that time because he had the previous experience of losing the back end and getting caught up. Kind of a miracle, frankly, that Rossi is in the spot he was after that incident with Hinchcliffe earlier. And then Hunter Ray's having a look outside of Will Power. You gotta love these helicopter shots. It is continuous one view coverage from the skies of Detroit. Well done. Under this caution, as we welcome those of you who are turning on at the conclusion of the NASCAR Cup race, welcome. Been a really eventful day here in Detroit. Scott Dixon has been at the front of this pack, Marty, for 31 laps over the duration of today's race. What does one of his team members, a very important team member, Mike Hull, have to say? Let's chat with Mike Hall, who is chatting with Scott Dixon right now. Boy, this has been a chaotic race to manage between fuel and tires and everything. Has this been more difficult to manage than normal, you think? <laughs> I think every race has personality, and this one has its own. But, uh, you know, we committed to a, a two-stop strategy and worked on that, and it's paying off at the moment. But, you know, we're going to have 11 laps to go when it goes great. So let's see what happens. You got some guys that might be a little desperate behind you. How confident are you in the car and Scott to pull this off? Always confident. Scott, uh, let's face it, uh, he keeps the tires underneath him for a full run, and I think that'll make a difference today. There you go, that experience may pay off. I love the scene down here because a moment ago, Chip Ganassi was explaining to Coach Mike Tomlin exactly how push to pass works and why all the numbers mean what, and Coach was trying to take it all in, but Coach down here to the very end, he wants to see Dixon win this thing. It's warming those tires up now, just pulled the gap under yellow, so, so important to get those tires ready for this restart. But this is yesterday's crash. You rarely ever see Scott Dixon make mistakes. And, but on this one, in the tricky conditions, he touched the inside wall, broke the steering on the car, and then immediately the car shot into the tire barrier. And that ended his day for the first time in a couple of years, Kevin. I know we wouldn't bet against Scott Dixon with the rookie in IndyCar, Marcus Erickson behind him, but the Formula One veteran has been coached up on the radio. Billy Vincent was telling him, you've been the fastest all day. He was faster on the last lap right before this caution than Scott Dixon. He's been saving push to pass, so might be not done yet. Let's watch. But Marcus Erickson has one big problem, and his name is Will Power, because he is going to be right on the tail of Erickson. Dixon sitting pretty on push to pass. 73 seconds, Erickson 40, power 28 left. Marcus Erickson has done almost 100 Formula One Grand Prix. I promise you, he has never been in a situation like this where he's in between two champions, two Indy 500 winners. He is suddenly in the big time of IndyCar. Ready to go. Dixon's on the gas early. Let's go back to green, racing. Green. 12 laps to go, make it 11 this time by. Can Erickson get his first podium? Power's coming, so to Ryan Hunter Ray. And in those first six cars, Lee, I had to check, there are five Indy 500 winners going all the way back to Takuma Sato. This is the heavyweight field of IndyCar. Erickson's had some speed this year, but he's made nope. mistakes. He's been in the tire barrier, he's had crashes. Sato down the inside, makes contact with Rossi. Rosenquist. Oh, Rosenquist. this is going to be trouble no, here. No, no, no. Rosenquist oh. and, and Sato came together yesterday, and Rosenquist said, I, I really respect Sato, but he put some questionable moves on me, so the Swedish rookie was not going to stand for it there. And Marco, uh, Marco Andretti made a great move on Rosenquist. Marco Andretti up to six. Wow. These guys are getting wild on this restart, but up front, it's still Dixon has a nice gap of one second. He's built up in a half a lap. Board uh -oh. A down the inside of Sato. Everybody going for it. I wonder if Sato got a flat tire. He's really off the pace now after making that move. He has just been beaten up. They've come from everywhere to get Sato. Santino Ferrucci and Pato Award in that dark blue 31 car looking pretty racy on the back of Ferrucci. All the rookies right here lined up. Problem for Sato. Yeah, Sato's got a flat tire, but these guys right here all 
right around 20 years old. Oh, Pato Award nearly gets in the back of Santino, but these three rookies are fighting it out for the Rookie of the Year. This is some serious action. And just like that, Scott Dixon has opened up a one and a half second lead. Here's Sato. What do you see, Kev? I see you down there. Obviously, likely a puncture, so Sato comes in. I didn't see anything else other than four fresh Firestones. I think Pato Award might have bent his front wing a little bit. It looks a little bit askew there. Daylight between him and Erickson, and about the same distance back to Power. Yeah, he's pulled a nice gap on Power. Power might have a little bit too much time on his tires. He's got to worry about Captain America right there sliding in on the podium spot. And watch out for Rossi. He is dangerous, and he is angry. The problem for Rossi, though, is only 18 seconds remain on push to pass. Hunter Ray has 20, Power 28. So Rossi, who can be very clever and crafty with figuring out how to deal with these situations, he has to do it with the least amount of push to pass in this battle. So the most recent caution, unfortunately, was for Arrow Schmidt peterson driver James Hinchcliffe. Jan, tell us more. Yes, and he's made his way back to the pit box. And James, we need to ask you, first of all, when you left the pits and you got intermixed there with Newgarden and Rossi, how was that from your perspective? was fine. I mean, the Aero guys did an incredible job in the pit lane. We jumped both those guys in the pit sequence, came out and, and essentially the lead on our strategy. Uh, and then, I don't know, I haven't seen the replay, so I don't want to say too much, but we were on cold tires, they were on hot. It seems like somebody ran out of patience, but like I said, I haven't seen it. It just sucks to end such a positive result in such a terrible way. Um, you know, when Joseph kind of overshot it, I had backed up enough to get around him, and then obviously when it got hit by Alex, he had nowhere to go. One of those deals. So, fun for the boys. They did an incredible job, and now just sort of cheer on Marcus to a hopeful podium. Well, here's a replay. This will be your first chance to take a look at it. You go to the right, and they follow you up. So, talk us through it. Yeah, I mean, I know he's there. I, I defend to the inside. He tries to take what's basically less than a car width inside. Yeah, just loses it. Alex gets in the back of me. I mean, you know, I look at that. I'm on cold tires. We're coming to another straightaway. Joseph had plenty of time to do it, and uh, ran out of patience, I guess. All right, James now obviously is pulling for his teammate, Marcus Erickson, who's running in a strong second place. There's always so much to take in when you see that, when you look at it again. Very quick thinking from Alexander Rossi to gas it up there, otherwise he would have got T-boned by Rosen. In fairness, in fairness, though, Newgard did take the blame. He said, I shouldn't have made that move. I was a little impatient, and obviously Hinch is frustrated. But there's Graham Rahal right there all over the back of the Ganassi car, and they are right behind Marco Andretti. That's the battle for six. Marco Andretti sits about three seconds behind Alexander Rossi. That's the battle for third, Power Hunter Ray and Rossi. So two different distinct battles going on in the final seven laps of this race. This will be a big finish for Erickson if he can hang on. He's got a two second gap now on Will Power, and this will be his best finish of his career for a guy who's been struggling so far this year to find the results. Well, he had a great run at Barber at, in Birmingham, Alabama. He was seventh. That's his best finish. He was running, him being Marcus Erickson, was running in the top ten all day long last weekend at the Indy 500, and he just pushed it a little too hard on pit entry, and the downshift caught him out. He spun and crashed into the pit wall, and that was it. But Erickson is getting better every time out. Here he is. And Marty, I think you talked to Rosenquist yesterday about whether or not he liked this rough and tumble track in Detroit, and his face lit up. He said he loves this place. 
He does love this track, Townsend, and you would think for the young rookie, remember at St. Pete, at the beginning of the year, he said he was sore after that race because it was his first street course race in an Indy car. And for him, really the big thing has been the ovals. Texas next week will be a challenge. But to me, the big thing, the recovery from the Indianapolis 500, a miserable month of May. And here he is fourth, running in the top 10 right now, finished fourth yesterday. Gonna be a good weekend for Felix Rosenquist. Watching his lap times, Erickson dished at a 16.5, Power 16.4, Dixon 16.5. They're all running about the same pace. Scott Dixon, this will be a huge Sunday oh! for him. Oh, we've got a problem. There's his teammate, Scott Dixon, with a big crash at turn one. Rosenquist, we were just talking about him. What has happened? That's a big one. He was running in that pack in the top ten, having a good day, grabbing more points. And it's over oh. in spectacular fashion. And we're going to end up now with a green-white checker shootout if they can get this cleaned up. And Scott Dixon has got to be careful that nobody attacks him on the restart. Hey, but it's a safety team's right there, and I think they're hurrying. They think Rosenquist is just fine, and the red flag comes out. So IndyCar going to hold things up and make sure we finish under green. And that car is destroyed. And that's not the first crash for Rosenquist no, this season. He was in it last weekend at the Indy 500. He was gonna in a big be, one. He's going to be on some thin ice now. There was so much hype about him coming into the season, how fast he is, but he's had a lot of crashes so far. And here's the replay. You can see the steering's bent. Look at that. Yeah. He's already hit a wall. Oh, so yeah. Big Rosenquist. Crash. Oh. So oh. he's brushed a wall and bent the tow link, and then in the brake zone, he just lost it. Wow. And Graham Rahal, terrific, terrific reaction to avoid contact there with Rosenquist because he was right behind Okay, him. look here. If we pause it right there, look at his steering. He's already hit the wall, and the left rear tow link is definitely bent. That steering wheel should be straight across. Instead, it's angled, and he just absolutely loses it. That's a driver that's made a small mistake and trying to hang on for a result. Well, look at the Rahal. rear view from Ray Hall. You'll see he breaks here and immediately he just loses it right here. Whoa, gone. And that's a big hit. And like I was saying just before, with these accidents, Chip Ganassi does not like crash damage bills. He wants results, he wants wins. And before this race, Chip Ganassi was with us on the grid, and I said to Chip, why don't you just write Alexander Rossi a huge check and be done with it? He smiled and said, maybe I will. Yeah. So under red here in Detroit, as the NTT data Honda needs rescuing and recovering. And everybody has a chance to just take in what's gone down from the last restart. This is and gonna we're going to have a shootout. Stuff. Wild, wild stuff here. Yeah. There's going to be some serious action going on with Hunter Ray, Power, and Rossi. I think Dixon has got the measure of of Rose, of um, Erickson. But this, these three cars right here, the Verizon car, the DHL, and the Napa car, are going to be going at it hot and heavy. Well, Erickson's going to have to watch out for Power. Power's going to be ready to pounce on that restart on Erickson. Dixon got a beautiful restart last time round. And it's all going to happen again. Here is Ryan Hunter Ray. He won this race a year ago, race two, when he was fighting his teammate Alexander Rossi. He's in the mix again. RHR is sitting fourth. What kind of a restart can he get? This will be a thriller. Once things get going, and it is, it's not a hot day here in Detroit. It's only in the low 70s, but it's a beautiful sunny day. But the umbrella's already coming out just to give the drivers a little bit of respite. Here's Felix Rosenquist earlier before his crash. Do we see him tag the wall somewhere? Just been looking at the replays here. I think it might have been right here. Yep. yep. That's turn 11. I think it got into the tires, and then it got into the concrete on the reaction. Now you can see the steering, and he knows it. He's trying to feel it out. And at this point, you're a rookie driver trying to secure your future with a championship team. And you're just doing, you're thinking to yourself, oh no, can I can I hold on? Will it work? Will it hold? And you're about to go into the fastest corner on the track, turn one. 
And he just told his team he damaged the car. And now he really damaged it. This is a super talented young driver who's raced all over the world. Yes, we categorize him as a rookie in the NTT IndyCar Series because it is his first year. But boy, it's been a tough one for him. It's a deep pool of talent, some fiercely competitive drivers and very competitive teams you have to beat just to be on the podium, let alone the top five. I got to say, Erickson was fantastic on that restart. He probably didn't want to see that yellow. No, no. Yeah, I think this guy right here just wanted to ride this out and get to a podium, his first podium. But now he's got to do it all over again. But I really think he's got the measure of power right now. I think power's trying to hang on to that podium spot. I'm excited to see what happens further back with that Andretti, Ray Hall, Veach, Bordet, Herta cluster because those guys were going at it. So lots of action still to come here from Detroit. Oh, it's going to be on. It is going to be on with a handful of laps left. This is going to be quite the street fight. The engines have been refired at Belle Isle. Five laps to go after a red flag. Scott Dixon is leading in race number two for IndyCar this weekend. And Marcus Erickson, the Formula One veteran and IndyCar rookie for Aero SBM, is second. This is Sam Schmidt, the car owner. How impressed have you been with him? Does he have anything for the five-time champ here at the finish? No, I mean, he's been good all year. Uh, in the race conditions, come forward. Uh, maximum number of positions, like you said, the 500 was going really well for him. So, uh, uh, you know, he's learned a lot about restarts from the master up there, you know. So, uh, but he's been racing really good, and and uh, we'd like to bring this home on the podium. Did you want another restart a chance to go for the win, or like you said, would you have been pretty content just to ride where you are and finish second? I think we would have been, you know, pretty content on that for sure, because uh, we've just had bad luck all year and haven't been able to execute and uh, and finish a race, you know. So. He's, uh, he's passed more people today than I think most of his Formula One starts. So uh, we're ready to go. Sam Schmidt has his driver in second, but Diff, he's got Indy 500 champions and series champions all around him. Uh, yeah, he's handling the pressure just fine. And let's take you back to some radio just a few moments ago for Marcus Erickson. Just like you've been doing all day, bud. Just a couple more laps to go. One restart, a couple more laps. Nice, calm response from Marcus Ericsson. A couple more laps and another restart. Let's do it. He's had just one top 10 from seven starts so far this season. And But like his team boss, Sam Schmidt, said, uh, a lot of the uh, frustration and the, the results have not been his fault. Some have been mechanical. Some have been crashes. But it's all coming together here for Marcus Erickson. And, and Can he hang on for his first IndyCar podium? And translating Sam Schmidt, I think he's like, just hold on to the podium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need any more disaster today. And that podium finish today, if he can hang on, will shake up the rookie of the year points. And, and everything keep it clean. We'll be going green the next time by here. It will move him right up towards the front of that little battle. There's a lovely story. There's a lovely story about Marcus Ericsson. There's only been six or seven Swedish drivers in IndyCar. Kenny Brack, who won the 99 Indy 500, by the way, was at the 500 last weekend. And when Marcus was a little boy in Sweden, his dad got took this, him brother, you got it. to Frederick Ekblom's go-kart center. And Frederick was one of those Swedish IndyCar drivers. It was Frederick who said to Marcus Ericsson's dad, this kid's got something you need to get him into car racing. And then Kenny Brack was involved in that story after that. So there's a lot of heritage. There's a terrific story to Marcus Ericsson making it to this point. Well, how about this? The guy that really gave Scott okay, Dixon okay, his okay, chance was the him. other Swedish IndyCar driver, Stefan Johansson. So Johansson, who's known about Ericsson for a long time in Sweden, he's been rooting for his five-time champ here to bring it across the line. This will be his first green-white checker experience. He's got to stay calm but he's got a 
these guys behind him, a lot of experience with knowing how to win races and make moves. Does he fight power or does he, or, or, or does he, what does he do? He's just got to focus on chasing Dixon, get the best restart he can and not make any mistakes because if you brush a wall like Dixon's teammate did, you can lose oh, it in yeah. the first corner. Oh, Dixon fun. checking him up there. Looking in the mirror, they've come out of turn 11. This is up to turn 12 on the 14 turn circuit. Look at Erickson, he doesn't want to let Dixon get away. He's got to go with him right now. Are you ready? Are you ready? right there on the back of Erickson. Erickson got checked up, look at power. Brilliant restart once again from Scott Dixon. This is power's best chance, I think. Trying to cross over a little bit and get a run down to turn three. Power's close, he's going to be on the push to pass. Uh, not close not enough. Close enough. Well done, Marcus Erickson. Awesome job, focus forward. Able to get through that restart. Alexander Rossi looks all at his clear, teammate. Getting coached all the way around. Erickson's getting his spotters telling him good restart. Spotter sounded pretty excited, like he felt that was power's only chance. Erickson stretching a little bit of gap as they come to the back straight. Look at this battle with Marco, Hunter Ray, and Rossi, all teammates going at it. All teammates battling each other. They don't want to bang wheels, but Rossi wants every position he could possibly get for the championship. Dixon has recovered big time today. He was 100 points behind. Now, 52. only 52. Two and a half laps remain here on Belle Isle, Detroit. Rossi looking. Rossi Stalking. has to be smart about points, though. Oh, Rossi that. sits second. He got on the power oh, hard. Now look. Be active. Three teammates in a row. All the here for the rest of the race. Two to go. Coming in. Alexander to go here. Rossi. Awesome job, bud. Focus Marco forward here. Andretti. Erickson is clear. He's got a one, one second gap over Will Power. Will Power is clear. At the battle right now is Rossi and his teammate Hunter Ray. Colton Herta under attack from Santino Ferrucci back there. They're side by side. Ferrucci makes the move, and here comes Pato Award. The three rookies trying to fight for Rookie of the Year honors, but Erickson is way up front and going to score a podium, who's another rookie. Former teammates here, Colton Herta, Pato Award. They drove for Andretti Autosport last year in the Indy Light Series. Award coming away with the championship. These three guys right here are the future of IndyCar, the future stars of the sport. And Pato Award goes for the outside on his ex-teammate from Indy Lights. First, second, Let's see how third. they come out. There's Veach, there's Bourdais. It was side by side into turn eight. Back up front. Hunter Ray continues to hold off Rossi, but Rossi's looking strong on this closing lap. They'll have the white flag. Pato Award got by Colton Herta at the end of the back straightaway. Now he's chasing down to go. One forward. more Bring lap to here. go for the champion, Scott Dixon. What a day for Scott Dixon. If you were with us earlier in the broadcast, a massive honor bestowed on Scott. He found out that he has been made a companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit in the Queen's Birthday Honours. That is a massive, massive thing for the Kiwi. And he carries that proudly. Robert Miller spoke to him about it at the beginning of the broadcast. He's one of New Zealand's most famous and successful sports people. He's a five-time IndyCar champion. He's on his way to a third victory here on the streets of Detroit and a massive rebound from yesterday's self-inflicted crash. So unusual to see Scott do that. But as his team boss, Chip Ganassi, told us on the grid pre-race, Scott is unbelievably strong psychologically. He had already demonstrated that he had forgotten about that. He had wiped that from his mind and he was focusing forward to this race today where he has been unbelievably strong. He's led 43 laps. The checkered flag is there for Dixon in Detroit. He wins race two of this duel in Detroit for his third win here. Yeah! Good job, thank you guys, girls. Thank you very much. That was awesome. A crash to victory lane. A day apart and a massive contrast 
an incredible comeback for Scott Dixon. And how about power with a comeback story and Marcus Erickson. So lots of great stories on the podium today. A rookie sandwiched between two champs. And it's Scott Dixon and the PNC Bank Honda that will celebrate a quick break. And we'll come back to hear from him. These days, it's got to be hot. Let's yeah. Go. Well, that was quite the comeback, and that shows, and that speaks to what Chip Ganassi was alluding to about Scott's psychological strength to put that crash yesterday behind him and drive to victory lane here in the Motor City. Coach Mike Tomlin, Super Bowl winning coach, is a guest of the team at PNC Bank, and he gets to see Scott drive all the way to victory lane, Marty. And it's so Scott Dixon-like of Scott to win this race after yesterday crashing out his first crash on his own since 2014. And how does he rebound with a win here in Detroit? And where was his first win last year in 2018? Detroit, what did he do? Go on and win the championship. And here he is in 2019 winning the first race for him. And the number nine team after a terrific start to the season, Scott Dixon is in victory lane. How about that? There's a lot going on in that race from fuel saving, from the tires falling off early for you. But I want to talk about those final few restarts. How did you hold those guys behind you? Yeah, it was just uh, the, uh, most of it was just trying to keep uh, track temp, you know, uh, or temp in the tires. You know, it was just such a uh, tricky situation, especially on the blacks. You know, uh, when they had a few laps on, it just seems like it picks up the concrete. But I can't thank the, the PNC Bank crew enough. You know, uh, rough day yesterday. Uh, I had a pretty good headache today, and my wrist was pretty sore after that one. But um, I just drove the wheels off it, and they did all the strategy, and the strategy is what nailed it. So I can't, I can't believe that we ended up here today, and it's fantastic, fantastic. When you wreck on your own like that, which you never do, or are you more determined today to get this thing to victory lane? Yeah, you are. You know, we, we, we still missed in qualifying a little bit today. We weren't the quickest car, which, you know, we were definitely frustrated about. But uh, I'm just happy, you know, for, for Honda, for uh, PNC. Uh, you know, uh, PNC built Dimtex here today, which is fantastic too. And we went to Detroit. It's awesome. There you go. The fountain's open for business, by the way. I know it's warm. Scott Dixon. I'll be in there, man. Oh, he's promising to go for a swim. There you go, Kevin. Well, Marcus Erickson was hoping for the swim, too. And for the first time in six years, you competed and had a chance to win. Back to your GP2 F2 days. What was it like? It was amazing. My first podium, yeah, like 20, since 2013. And uh, you just have to thank, you know, the whole team in our SPM. They worked so hard all year. And... You know, we had so much bad luck, and I've done mistakes when we've been looking really good. So to finally get the result like this and be on the podium, I think is a great reward for all the hard work, and now we can build on this. Great drive, and James Hinchcliffe is one of the first here to greet him and congratulate Marcus Erickson. Jan? And what an incredible day and storybook ending for Will Power. Who would have thought when you're stopped on course, you can't shift the car, that you're on the podium? I know. I, I couldn't believe it. Like, uh, amazing day. Uh, Got to thank Chevy and Verizon. Give me a good car. Definitely uh, thought we were done. Thought we were done. I, I couldn't shift, and and obviously the, I tried to reset it, then it stalled. But uh, just a great recovery. We went fast when we needed to in that sequence to get a bunch of spots, and then uh, I said I haven't been satisfied with the race since Gateway. This is the first time I've been satisfied with the race. Is that satisfaction going to get you now back on track after seeing so much misfortune? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It always switches at some point. I reckon this is a switch. All right. Hope that is a switch for Will Power. Kevin? All things considered, it was pretty nice to salvage some results with some difficult circumstances for Ryan Hunter Ray. Fifth yesterday, fourth today, and a flat tire to finish the race? <laughs> yeah. I knew I had a flat there on the, on the red flag, and obviously the more you sit still, the quicker it deflates. So it really dumped out on that a red flag. I knew that wasn't going to be good for us. And um, when I just came out of, got out of the car here, stopped, checked it out, it was, it was pretty much dead flat. I mean, you could sink your hand into it. So... It's amazing we salvaged that, but uh, fought hard all day, all weekend. Uh, didn't, wasn't a qualifying we hoped for for the DHL team, and um, w but I think we salvaged a good weekend all in all and uh, fought really hard there to come home on a, on a flat right rear. So happy with that end, but uh, could have been a bit better, I think. Good results. On to Texas, Jan. And still somewhat of a smile here for Alexander Rossi, and you've got to talk us through what happened down there in that amazing incident where you kept rolling in turn three when you all came together. Yeah, I mean, it was three of us going for it, and uh, I was all the way on the inside, and it was getting pretty pretty dicey, so I just bailed out, and uh, I guess that was the right decision. All right, well, Alexander Rossi, again, salvaged something nice. That reaction time getting back rolling again was epic. 
and that's what Alexander was referring to. It has been an amazing day here in Detroit. That's IndyCar for you. You never know what's going to happen till the checkered flag flies. And who would have thought that Dixon, after those tires going bad and falling into the middle of the field, that he'd come back for a win? As we look at the point scenario, you see several stories. New Garden, probably the biggest. He still leads, but just by 15 points. Alexander Rossi actually moved up one position in the championship. Pagano, who had the magical month of May, sits third. And then Will Power recovers. He's kind of looking over everybody's shoulder there in sixth position. The point to make is Joseph Newgarden finished 19th today, but still has a 15-point championship lead heading to Texas next week. Three different weeks, three very, very different circuits. This championship has been amazing this year. Well, so much fun. Yeah, a lot of action next Saturday night. Texas Motor Speedway, high speed, high banks, over 200 miles an hour. You know what they call it there, Lee? It's No Limits Texas. It we'll is. see you Saturday night. Indeed. Scott Dixon, first win since Toronto last year. It's been a long time coming, but that was a masterful display from the five-time series champ. Coming up next, except on the West Coast, it's your local news. And we look forward to you joining us next Saturday for the DXC Technology 600 from Texas Motor Speedway. And as Paul alluded to, that's a Saturday night race. It is 8 o'clock Eastern, and you can see that on NBCSN. Congratulations to Chip Ganassi. Congratulations to Marcus Erickson. Second place, but first, the win was Scott Dixon. See you in Texas next week.